I'm Bethany and I love to travel. Right now, I'm at Couples Tower Isle Resort in Ocho Rios, Jamaica, one of my favorite travel spots. I recently got the idea to make a WordPress website so I could share my travel experiences and give advice to people who are new to traveling abroad. I wanted my website to be mobile friendly, easy to navigate, and simple for me to update. It turned out so well that my husband and I decided to make a tutorial to show others how to use WordPress. I hope you enjoy making your website as much as I had fun making mine. Thanks, Bethany. Hello, I'm Yoda. Welcome to my remote office, San Susi Resort, Ocho Rios, Jamaica. In this WordPress tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a WordPress website with easy to follow steps, no hidden cost, in less than two hours of your time. This video will use all the current web design and web development techniques to create a fully responsive website that will automatically adjust to meet the screen needs of any type of computer, laptop, tablet, phone, or any other handheld device. I think we're ready to get started, so without further delay, let's go ahead and visit Bethany's new website, yourultimatevacation.com, which is the website we're going to build today. Now her website starts out displaying a YouTube video, and basically we're going to be able to embed that into your website. Now initially you see this and you can already feel a little overwhelmed. It's like, wow, look at all this complicated stuff, but the truth is the software we're going to use is going to do all the complicated stuff. All we have to do is tell it what to do. Now to start with, Bethany's going to have a logo at the top left corner. We're going to learn how to make this logo for free online. We'll then learn how to find free video content that you can insert into your website, and then we'll learn how to insert that video content into your website. Now as we scroll down, notice how the content animates in until it gets to its final destination. I'll show you how to do this animation yourself. It's actually very simple. We'll learn how to insert pictures into your website. We'll learn how to add text and change the size and the color. We'll learn how to make these little wave dividers. There's actually lots of different dividers to choose from. This is just the one we chose. We'll learn how to do call to action areas. Notice how the icon pops out and the button pops out. and We can control the colors of all this and the size and everything about it. Change the icon as well. We'll learn how to do these accordion lists where we could basically do any kind of frequently asked questions we want to do. Notice how you click on the different sections and it brings it up. Now you're not actually doing any of the coding to make this happen. All you're doing is providing the content. The software we're going to use is going to do all the real work. We'll learn how to do a photo carousel. Notice you can force it to go to the right or the left, or if you let it sit long enough, it'll just scroll on its own. Notice in the testimonial section how the animation brings the content in nicely. We'll learn how to make this testimonial section with images and the different text sizes. We'll be able to control all this to whatever you need it to be. When we go to build this, you'll see that there's plenty of options to make this exactly what you want it to be. You have total control at that level. Then we're going to do this parallax background. Notice how the image slides up and down inside of the window. Then we'll learn how to add this floating box on top with a join our email list inside of it. We'll show you how to make the two fields that are required, and we'll also show you how to make the send button go exactly to who you want it to go to. At the very bottom, we have a footer. It has four separate sections. You don't have to use all four sections, but I generally do. You have complete control of the content that goes in your footer. Notice that column four has complete navigation that can take you anywhere from here. Or you can hit the button at the bottom right, which takes you all the way to the top of the website. Then we'll build her About Us page. And on the About Us page in the header is this other logo. We're going to learn how to make that. Now also we'll learn how to put this movie in the header at the top. Now this could also just be a graphic or an image. We have full control over that. Here's another two column section that has some text to the left and image to the right. And then under Destinations you'll see that Destinations is not clickable. We'll learn how to make that not clickable. I mean it could be clickable, but we're going to learn how to make it not clickable. And then we're going to build individual pages under that, for example, the Destinations Jamaica page, which is definitely one of our favorite destinations. We're going to learn how to make this really nice header. In fact, if I turn around where I'm sitting right now, that's exactly the view I have. It's just unbelievable how beautiful it is here. Definitely one of my favorite places in the world to develop is right here at San Susi Resort, Ocho Rios, Jamaica. If we scroll down, you'll notice these little progress bars. We'll learn how to make these and have complete control over those. It's basically a status bar where you control the text and the percentage. We'll also learn how to make these buttons that allow you to jump down to a particular place in the page. For example, if we scroll down to things to do, you can see that takes quite a while to get there. But if I click on the button, it takes me right there immediately. We'll learn how to make these pictures go all the way to the edge like this. We'll also learn how to put the text in the boxes and how to control the spacing around them. And we'll go back up to the top. We'll learn how to make a gallery. 
And one of the things this gallery has is called a light box. And a light box, all that means is when you click on an image, it brings it up in a highlighted box, and then you can click to the right or the left from here. Notice when we close that picture, it doesn't matter which picture you click on, it'll start rotating from that point. Again, you're not doing any of the mechanics of this. You're simply going to drag a photo gallery in, tell it which pictures you want to do, and it's going to do all the work for you. That's what's really incredible about this product. It really does all the work. All we do is tell it what to do. Then we're going to build a travel tips page, which includes all the travel tips that Bethany's collected over the years. Just an incredible list of helpful tools for people who want to travel abroad. Our goal, of course, is to build the page. And notice it has all these really cool accordion pull downs, and all we did was provide the content. It did the work for us. And then finally, we'll build a Contact Us page. And on the Contact Us page, we'll learn how to do these separate sections. Again, these can be ordered however you want. This is just one example of how it can be done. So you can have phone, email, and address. The phone will be clickable. The email could be clickable, but we try to encourage people to use the Message Us form, so we made it not clickable here. And then we'll show you how to make the name, email, and phone fields required, whereas the subject and the Your Message fields are not required. And we'll show you how to make the Send button go exactly where you want it to go. And we'll learn how to insert a Google Map into your website. Notice how the map can be moved around. It can be zoomed in. It can be zoomed out. And we should be able to complete the actual construction of the website itself in a little less than two hours. Now, all professional websites have certain intrinsic costs you simply can't avoid. For example, you're going to need quality website hosting, and that's going to run you about $10 a month. And you're also going to need a domain name. That's how you access your website, and that runs about $12 a year. I'm going to show you where I get these services from at a discount promotional rate, but if you choose to purchase your web hosting somewhere else and your domain somewhere else, this course will work just fine. But outside of those costs, that's it. There's no extra cost to follow. If you're concerned you're going to run into troubles while taking the course, don't. I've been a webmaster instructor, aka the Web Yoda, for over 20 years, and I'd love to hear from my students. So as you work your way through this course, feel free to express your comments, suggestions, and questions below the video. If you have any troubles, just ask. I'll be more than happy to assist you. But in exchange, Please pay it forward, like the video, share the video, subscribe to the video, tell your friends about the video. It's the best way for me to get the word out there to help as many students like yourself as possible. So we're ready to start on our website, but before we can build a website, we have to have a place for our website to live. And that's what web hosting does for you. Otherwise, you'd build a website on your local computer, but only you'd be able to see it. You want to be able to have the world see it, so you have to get hosting so everybody else can see your results. The next question is, who are you going to get hosting from? Because obviously there's a lot of choices out there. Well, WebYoda did some research, and they came across some very non-biased results where PC Magazine conducted an Editor's Choice Award for web hosting. And shown here are the top six results from that Editor's Choice Award. And of the six, HostGator was the number one pick for PC Magazine's Editor's Choice Award. And this was because their features were amazing, their reliability and security was amazing, and their 24-7 support was very proactive. With all of this, their pricing was as good or better than any of the other options out there. So WebYoda decided to go with HostGator, and they use that for all their students and any websites they build. And we'll also be using HostGator for this course as well. So at this point, we're going to go to HostGator.com, front slash WebYoda. And the reason for that link is that now WebYoda has a partnership with HostGator, thereby every time a hosting package is sold through that partnership, a small portion of that goes to the WebYoda Foundation. And the WebYoda Foundation in turn uses that money to build more free courses like this one, as well as to provide free training for training centers and online students all over the world who may not be able to afford professional training. So let's go ahead and go to the link HostGator.com front slash WebYoda, and this will show the web hosting options that HostGator has to offer. Now HostGator has three levels of hosting. Their recommended hosting package is the Hatchling plan. And this plan is for a single domain, so if you're doing a single website or if you're a student taking this course, then the Hatchling plan is for you. Now no matter which plan you get, they all come with one-click installs. Now what this means is, for example, when we install WordPress, there'll be an individual click inside of our control panel. We click that once and it'll do all the work to install our WordPress. Next, all three plans come with unmetered bandwidth. And what this does for you is no matter how much traffic your website gets, you're not going to be charged any extra. And finally, what to me is outstanding is they offer you a free SSL certificate. Well, what is that? Why do I want one? Well, it's the secure key, the little key up here in the top left. And as of earlier this year, Google is basically favoring websites that are secure. 
and also favoring websites that are mobile friendly. So we're going to build a website that's mobile friendly using WordPress and thanks to HostGator we're going to have a free secure key so Google's going to like us even more. Now normally you could pay $35 to $100 for a feature like this and HostGator's basically given that to us for free. And when your hosting options start at just $278 a month it's just really hard to beat. If you're going to have multiple websites you need to go with the baby plan because that allows you unlimited domains, basically unlimited websites within your account. And then if you're doing even larger things where you need a dedicated IP and you need a lot of SEO tools, then the business plan is probably the package for you. Now the Hatchling plan is going to work fine for us for this example. Bethany only has one website, so let's go ahead and click the Buy Now button. Now we're ready to complete our web hosting application so we can activate our hosting. And our first decision is, do I need to register a new domain or do I already own a domain? In most cases you don't own a domain, so you need to enter a domain in this box. Unfortunately, lots of domain names are already taken, so it may take you a while to find a domain that will work for your company that it also is available. For this example, I'm going to make up one, chooseadomainname.com, and then I'm going to click to the right of the .com button here, and it says that domain name is not available. So I'm going to pick a new domain name, choose another domain name.com, and then I'll click to the right again. That one is available, so we're ready to go, and we don't need any of these other names because those are for somebody else's website, not ours. Now if you scroll down, the next thing you'll see is Domain Privacy Protection. So let's turn this off to see exactly what this is. Now for $14.95 a year, if somebody goes to look up your domain name, the result they'll see will say that it's owned by HostGator.com, have their address, their phone number, and their email. If you choose not to pay this fee, then if somebody looks your domain name up, it's going to have your name, your address, phone number, and email. But this is likely on your website already, just like it's going to be for Bethany. So for us, there's really no benefit in paying the $14.95, so we're going to choose to avoid that fee. Now in Bethany's situation, she already owns her domain. So we're going to scroll back up to the top, and we're going to choose I already own this domain. So we'll enter her domain in the box, yourultimatevacation.com. Then we'll click to the right, and it shows it added. Again, a bunch of additional choices, but we don't need any of those. And notice when we scroll down that the privacy option is gone now because that's only applicable if you're purchasing your domain name through HostGator. Now we're ready to set our details for our hosting plan. We already chose the Hatchling plan, but at any time if you need to upgrade, you can just contact them and they'll just charge you the difference. Your next choice is your billing cycle. And this goes all the way from 36 months at their best price at $278 a month down to $548 a month for the first month. Now obviously the longer you commit to, the better your price is, but on top of that we're going to give you a promotional code WebYoda and that's going to get you an additional 60% off of whatever your purchase is today. Now we need to choose a username, in my case I'm just going to choose Admin Yoda, and a security pin of 9999. Now we need to enter our billing information, and they give you an option between credit card and PayPal, which is nice. I'll be entering this information behind the scenes. Now we're going to look at their additional services and decide which ones work best for us. The secure key is the first one. It's free, so we're definitely keeping that one. The second one is protection for the website. Well, they already offer great protection of their servers because they want to make sure that their servers aren't hacked by anyone. Next, they're going to offer protection from you so that you don't accidentally mess up their servers. So in my opinion, if you pay for this, you're paying for a service you really don't need. Next, for $5 a month, they'll give you a professional email. WebYoda has a video that shows you how to make an email forward for free on your HostGator account and that helps you avoid this fee. Next there's a backup option for $23.95 a year. We're going to opt against this for two reasons. One, HostGator does monthly backups on an automated basis for us. And two, WebYoda has a video on how to back up your WordPress website and thereby avoiding the annual fee. The last option under their additional services is an SEO package, and I really don't want to tie an SEO package to my web hosting package at this time. Maybe once the website's complete, I can address that. The next box is the coupon code box. In this box, you'll want to put WebYoda. This is going to get you 60% off your entire purchase today. If you find an option out there better than that, please let us know, because our partnership with them pretty much guarantees that no one's going to have better than 60% off. You do the math over here, you'll see it's basically 60% off. Now, we don't have the domain name in here because Bethany already owned her domain, so your price may be a little higher than this. 
Also, if you choose a longer term, your price will go up from here and you'll still get the 60% off your total purchase. But in our case, this 583 is really an outstanding price for what we're getting today. At this point, we can scroll down and we're ready to check out. You'll notice that the Check Out Now button is disabled. That is because we need to agree to their Terms of Service and Cancellation Policy before we can proceed. So if we just click the box over here to the left, then we're ready to check out. And now we're ready to click the Check Out Now button to complete our purchase. At this point, our purchase is complete and we're waiting for HostGator to finish setting up our account. Once complete, it'll refresh to the next page. And our order is complete and we're ready to proceed. Our next step is to log into our control panel for our new hosting account that we just purchased. And to do that, we first need to go to our email. And there's mine now. So we want to click into your email, and you'll be looking for an email from HostGator that has your account information in it. It's going to have the domain name that's associated with your hosting account. It'll have the username that you chose. And it's going to have a password they created for you, so you're going to need to highlight that and copy the clipboard because nobody could possibly remember that password. It also includes the link to your control panel for your hosting account. And you're going to need to make a copy of this link or make a bookmark to it or something because you're going to be going back to that periodically. Alternatively, you could also refer to this email they sent you. So now we're going to click on our link to our control panel. This will create a new tab at the top and it says cPanel Login. You want to click on that tab and that brings up the box to log into your control panel. And then you want to enter your username, in this case Admin Yoda. And then you're going to paste in that crazy password you just copied from the email. Next you're going to click the Login button. And now you've successfully logged into your cPanel, your control panel, for your web hosting account. Now we're ready to install WordPress. In the section at the top called Popular Links, you want to look for Build a New WordPress Site. First we need to select our domain name for installation. Simply click the pull down and click on your domain name. Now since we use this account for more than one thing, there's lots of things in our box. So in our case, we're going to pick Bethany's new site, YourUltimateVacation.com. As for a directory name, you don't need to choose one. We're simply going to click the Next button. Now we're going to enter the blog title, which is basically the website name. So for Bethany's site, we're going to put Your Ultimate Vacation. For my WordPress admin user, I'm going to use Yoda user. And for the first name and last name, I'll just choose Yoda Yoda. Then for the admin email, I'm going to use yoda at webyoda.com. We want WordPress to automatically create our database for us, so we'll leave this checked. Then we need to agree to their terms of service, so we'll click that. And now we're ready to install, so we'll click on install. You can see at the top that it's spinning away. Then it says installation complete. Even though our installation is 100% complete, if you look to the right, the overall website progress is only 60%. Now if you scroll down, you'll see why that is. They basically want to upcharge you for different features. Well, we don't need to pay for any extra features because I'm going to show you how to do the rest of the install for free. Under the installation details, you can see that our WordPress has been installed to yourultimatevacation.com. Our username is the one that we selected, in this case, Yoda user. And then they've also generated a really fancy password for us. So we're going to copy that password to our clipboard. And next we're going to click the Login button. Now we're at the login area for our WordPress admin. In the first box you want to type in your username, in my case Yoda user. And then we're going to paste that crazy password they gave us into the password box. Then we're going to click on Login. Now when you see the WordPress admin come up for the first time, it can be very intimidating. You're like, oh my god, what have I got myself into? This looks really complicated. How am I going to build that website we looked at earlier using this stuff? But fear not, we're not going to be using any of this craziness. We're going to have a very simple way for you to do this. If you have any troubles at all, you'll just leave questions under the video. I'll answer and help you, get you moving again. You can get through this, trust me. This little message here, we can just dismiss that. Now before we proceed, I want to go ahead and clean up our tabs a little bit. We no longer need this one, so we can close that one. We no longer need this one, so we can close that one. And now I want to open up a tab to the right that is the website we're going to build. And to do that, we're on a highlight right here. And then if we right click here, it brings up a menu where we can open up our website in a new tab. Now our website is here, so we can click on that. And as of now, you can see it's a whole lot of nothing. 
And now I want to open up a new tab over here to put Bethany's version of the website as our reference site. So I opened up a new tab, and now we'll go to her web address. Now we can go back to our dashboard, and we're ready to proceed. At this point, our WordPress application is officially installed, but as a next step, I'd like to go ahead and show you how to change that crazy password they gave you to something that's more manageable. What you're looking at is the dashboard for your WordPress admin. On the left-hand side, about three-quarters of the way down, is an option called Users. This is where you can update, add, and delete users to your system. Let's go ahead and click on Users. Now, I notice that our mouse is a little difficult to see, so I figured I'd turn on highlighting to make it easier for you to follow. Now, that's a little bit better. Now, let's go ahead and click on the username, and this brings up the profile for the user. And as we scroll down the profile, there's a section near the bottom called New Password, Generate Password. When you click on Generate Password, it's yet another fancy password that craziness nobody's going to want to be able to remember. And so we're going to delete that, and then we'll click on Hide so people don't see us typing our new password. And as we start typing, you'll notice it'll say Very Weak, and maybe it'll say Weak. And then you have to type Confirm Use or click on Confirm Use Weak Password. You really won't want to do that. You want to pick something that's got strong, and then that'll give this, and that little message goes away. That way, you have a really fancy password, but yet it's still something you can remember, so it's the best of both worlds. At this point, we just go ahead and click on Update Profile. And up here, it shows Profile Updated, so now we now have a new password. At this point, I want to take care of a couple of frequently asked questions. Um, the first of those is, how do you log into your WordPress? How do you come back to it and log into it? And the answer is in your URL. Basically, it's your domain name slash wp-admin, and that'll take you back to the login box for your WordPress. So if I hit Enter on that, I would normally get a login box. Since I'm already logged in, it just takes me to my dashboard. But typically, you type in your domain name, front slash wp-admin, and that's how you get to the login box. Now, the next frequently asked question I get a lot is, how do I go back to a particular spot in the video to review it or to reuse it in another website? And the answer is, go to the video that you watched, in this case, the one you're watching now, and then scroll down below the video and look for where it says Show More. And when, if you click on Show More and scroll down in that, there's a section called Timestamps. In any of these timestamps, if you click on it, it takes you to the review for that particular piece of the video. Now, these timestamps were for a different Web Yoda tutorial, but the idea is the same. Now that our WordPress is completely installed, there's a few other things we need to install to get everything ready for us to work on our real website. The first of those is called a theme. So we're going to click on Appearance and Themes. And then we're going to be adding a new theme. But first what we need to do is download the theme we're going to use. And so we're going to make a new tab in our browser. And then we're going to go to webyoda.com front slash themes. And this brings up the themes page on the Webyoda website. And now we're just going to scroll down to the project we're working on. In this case, yourultimatevacation.com. And the theme for this website is Ocean WP theme. So we're going to click on that. And it will download it. To our downloads folder and each time I do a download like that mine automatically brings up a window like this yours may not and I can click close on that and now I'm ready to upload our new theme and to do that we can go ahead and close this tab we're going to go back to WP admin and at the top of themes there's an add new button we clicked on that and now we're going to click on the button that shows up in the same spot upload theme and we're going to choose a file on our local computer. In this case, it's in my downloads folder, and it's called oceanwp.zip. I click on Open. And now I'll click on Install. And it will install that theme. And once the theme is installed, you make sure that you click on Activate, which is right here. And that makes it the active theme that you're going to use for your website. Now, oftentimes when you do an install of the theme, it's possible that they've made updates to it, which they do fairly regular, and you'll see an update button. If you see one, just click on the update button, and it'll give you the latest version of that. Now, there's one last thing we need to install before we can actually start building our website, and that item is plugins. 
Now, plugins are the tools that are going to allow us to build our website. Much like a contractor has tools to build a house, WordPress uses plugins to build websites. So on the left-hand side, we can click on the word plugins. Now, inside of plugins, there's going to be a list of all the plugins that come by default within your WordPress environment. But these plugins are for somebody else's website, not for ours. So our first step will be to delete all of these WordPress plugins, and then we'll proceed to install the plugins we'll use with our website. To delete plugins, you first have to deactivate them. And on the left-hand side, you'll see a box that says Bulk Actions. If you do the pull-down, you can choose Deactivate. And just below that is a box you can click called Plugin that will allow you to select all the plugins at once. Now we're going to click Apply. At this point, it's going to deactivate each one of them. Now they're deactivated. At this point, we can go to the Bulk Actions option again. We can choose Delete. We can choose our Plugin button to select them all again. And then we click Apply. Click OK. Yes, we really want to do this. And we watch one by one as they get deleted and clean up our environment. So now all the plugins are deleted, and we're ready to start installing our own plugins. To install our plugins, we first have to download them to our local computer, then we can upload them into our WordPress environment. To do that, we're going to make a new tab in our browser. We're going to go to webyoder.com, front slash plugins. Now on this page, scroll down to the project we're going to be doing. In this case, yourultimatevacation.com. And one by one, we're going to click on each of the plugins to download them to our computer. First plugin we're going to download is Elementor. And this is the page building plugin that's going to allow us to build our amazing website today. Every time I download a plugin, I get one of these pop up boxes. And I don't need all these, so I'm going to close these as I go along. The second plugin is Contact Form 7. Now, Contact Form 7 is the most popular contact form plugin for WordPress. It allows us to build the contact forms where we can send information from our website to us from the users. The third is CF7 Elementor. And this allows the Contact Form 7 to work inside the Elementor environment. The fourth is Ocean WP Extra, and these are extra plugins that work well with the theme that we installed. And the final one is the Duplicate Page plugin. And this thing is amazing. It allows you to take, for example, the destinations to make a page and make a copy of it and call it a Hawaii page, and then we can just change the content to be the new page we need. Now that we've downloaded all our plugins, it's time to start installing our plugins. We're going to go back to WP Admin, and from here we're inside our plugins, and at the top we're going to click on Add New. At this point, click on Upload Plugins, choose File, and just go to your Downloads folder. That's where they should be at. We'll start with the one at the top, Duplicate Page. We'll click on Open, Install Now, and once it's installed, you need to click Activate Plugin. Once that's complete, we'll click on Add New again, Upload Plugin, choose a file, Ocean WP, Install Now, Activate Plugin, and three more to go. Click on Add New, Upload Plugin, choose File. Pick our third one, install now, activate plugin, add new, upload plugin, choose file, pick our fourth one, open, install now, activate plugin, and we have one more, the biggie. Elementor. You're going to love it. Add new. Upload plugin. Choose file. Elementor. Open. Install now. And activate plugin. And we are officially ready to start working on our website. Now Elementor is going to come with a brief overview, but you don't need that. You have me, so we can close this out. And there's one last thing I wanted to bring up. If you notice near the top left that it says Updates to, and lower down it says Plugins to. Basically that's telling us there's some updates that can be done. 
And if you click on whatever the item is, in this case plugins, you scroll down, you can hit update now next to each one of these. And this makes sure you're running the most up to date versions. You'll notice that even though we just installed WordPress, there's a message here at the top that says that there's available for a new update. Now this is likely because the default installed version was not necessarily the most up to date and now there's a newer version available. Well that's good because now we can learn how to update our WordPress. Now to update WordPress, basically when you log in to your dashboard, you'll see a message like this. And if that message shows up, all you need to do is go ahead and click to update now. So we'll click on update now. And at the top of the WordPress updates page, there's an important notice to back up your database and files. Now if this is a new WordPress environment where you haven't built anything yet, you don't need to worry about the backup. But if you've got your website already up and running, you're looking to update your WordPress you'll want to back those up. Now we already have a video for backing up your database and files called how to back up your WordPress and it's using a product called Backup Buddy and use that video to see how to do automated and manual backup so that you can go ahead and do that before you would proceed. At this time we're going to go ahead and click on update now and this starts the update process for the WordPress. Now the update's complete, and it usually doesn't take too long, but it could take a little bit longer. It just depends on circumstances. And from here, we can just click on Dashboard to get back where we were at before we started the update. Now one of the things you'll quickly notice when you're working on your website is that the dashboard will change regularly. For example, what you're seeing right now in the dashboard is what it looked like before we installed our plugins, and it's just information about what's going on currently with WordPress, and a lot of times it's advertisement for things that you have installed or advertisement for things they might want you to install. Now once we installed our theme and our plugins, you'll notice that this is what the dashboard looked like, and it has information about our new theme, and it has information about our mentor and things that are going on. These little windows are movable, so they might be useful for you and give you information about what's going on and things like that. But many times things will come up, like this little piece at the top. It's just an advertisement. They're recommending something, but we're not going to be using that. So we can close those little advertisements out like that. Okay, our first step in building our website is to create some pages. To do that, we're going to click on Pages on the left-hand side. And first, we'll go ahead and delete the pages that are there. These are just sample pages. We don't need those. So I can choose those. Bulk actions. Move to trash. Apply. And now we have no pages. Now to add our first page, we're going to click on Add New. And from here, we don't need this little box. It's not going to be helpful. We're going to set a couple of defaults. The reason why we're going to do that is so once we've finished our first empty page, we can copy it and the defaults for all the new empty pages will already be set. So first let's set a title for the page. Since this is our first page, we'll call it Home. And then under Content Layout, we're going to use 100% Full Width. And finally under Title, we're going to set the title to be Disabled. And these are just the defaults that are going to work for the site we need to build. So now at the top right, we'll click Publish and click publish again and now our page is complete and if we go back to pages we'll see that it's listed as our first page that's available now there's one more default I want to set on our initial page so if you highlight the name of the page it comes up with these extra options and we're going to choose the option quick edit in here there's a template and we're going to choose Elementor full width because that's the one we're going to be using for this course now we can click on update and our first default page is complete. So to copy this page, if we put our mouse over the home name again, this menu comes up, and the right is duplicate this. That's how you duplicate one. But how many duplicates do we need? So let's go back up to Bethany's site, and we have our home. We need one, two, three, four, five empty pages. So we'll come back over to our WordPress admin, and we're going to make five empty pages. So first, if we highlight home, we see duplicate this. We'll click on that. And now we have one copy. Click duplicate this again. And now we have two copies, three copies, four copies, and now five copies. So at this point, we just need to rename each of these to be the individual pages they're going to be. So if we hover over the name, we can choose quick edit. 
And the first page is going to be about, so we'll put a title of about. And the slug name is basically the name of the page itself when you go to click on it. And we're going to make that lower case because the server is case sensitive. And now we can hit update. Now our second page name is going to be destinations. So we go into quick edit, title of destinations, and slug name of destinations, lowercase. Update. Now we're ready for our third page. We click on quick edit, set the title of gallery, the slug name of gallery, lowercase, and we click update. Now we're going to do the travel tips page. We click on quick update. So we're going to give it a title of travel tips, a slug name of travel tips with a lowercase t, a dash, and another lowercase t. And the reason why we like to use a lot of these words is if you're using keywords in your slug names, it makes the search engines like you better. So now we need to scroll down a little bit so we can see our update button. We'll click on update. And now we're ready to change our last one. So we hover over the name, click on quick edit, title of contact, slug name contact, lowercase. Scroll so we can see the word update. And now all our individual pages have their own individual names. Now I did forget one thing, and that was that these are all in draft mode instead of published mode. So we're going to quickly change that, and you can see how that works. So I'm going to go back into Quick Edit, under Status, choose Publish, and Update. And I'm going to do it for all the rest of these, and you'll see that draft will go away. And now all of our pages are published, and we're ready to start building our first page. To edit the pages of our website requires us to access the Elementor plugin. And to do that, it's the same for all pages. First, you want to make sure you can see the list of your pages by clicking on Pages on the left. And then choose the page you want to edit. Let's say we want to edit the About page. So we clicked on the About, and at the very top there's a button that says Edit with Elementor. And we're going to click on that button. This loads our page in Elementor, and now we're ready to make edits. Now let's say we're done making edits, and we need to get back to the dashboard. You come to this hamburger icon, you click on that, and at the very bottom is Exit to Dashboard. Now at this point we can go back to our pages and choose a different page to work on. Now notice that the About has Elementor next to it. That means it's in the Elementor mode. That also means when we go to edit it, if we click on it again, now instead of having an icon at the top, it has one right in the middle of the page, and we click on that icon going forward to make edits to that page. And if you're ready to work on another page, click on Pages and choose another page that you want to edit. You'll notice the link for the Destinations page is now changing to Destinations Jamaica. This is because the actual page is Destinations Jamaica, but the link at the top is Destinations that we'll need for the menu. Now before we start adding content to our pages, if we go back to Bethany's site, notice this menu across the top. We want to go ahead and build that menu before we do anything else. So let's go back to our dashboard. Now to add a menu, we need to go to Appearance and Menus. And in the box next to Menu Name, we're going to put Main Menu and Save Menu. Now we're going to pick all the pages that we just created, and we're going to add them to Menu. Then we'll scroll down, and under Custom Links, we'll add another menu item, Destinations, and we're going to use a pound sign as the URL for now. Click Add Menu. And now we have our menu, we need to organize it the way we're going to use it. So we wanted our Home button at the top, and then About, and then Destinations, and then Gallery, and then Travel Tips, then Contact, and then Destinations Jamaica is a sub-menu for Destinations, so we're going to bring it up here and then set it just to the right under Destinations. Now as a final step, we're going to go into this custom link, which is Destinations, and just take that out. And that's how you make it to where it's not clickable. So we can click on Save Menu. And now our menu is saved. And then at the bottom, we want to choose this to display as our main menu. And then we'll click on Save Menu again. And now if we go over to our website and we hit Reload, you notice now we have a menu. And each of these items is clickable. And they take us to those default pages that we've made. So notice that Destinations is not clickable, but the pull-down Destinations Jamaica is clickable. All the pages obviously look the same because they're empty right now. Within Bethany's website, she had a black menu bar with these lighter colors. Now it's not totally black, 
and the letters aren't totally white. That makes it a little easier to read. Um, so to make that effect, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin, and under Appearance, this time we're going to choose Customize. And within Customize, we're going to choose Header, and so you may need to scroll down a little bit to see it. And inside a header, we're choosing General, and that's going to have the place where you're going to change your background color. Now, if you click on Select Color, it comes up with this pad where you can basically move around and pick whatever color you want, or choose from these different choices here, and then move it around some more and decide what color you want. Now, in our case, Bethany went to a lot of trouble to go ahead and make a lot of information for us. So, for example, the titles and the slugs were there that she used in her website as are the default colors that she used, all the logo colors and things like that. So for her, the menu, she wanted to have it black, but not totally black, and this color is a little less than black, and I'll show you how that works. When we come back over here, if I pick black, notice it's all zeros, or if I pick white, it's all Fs. Well, all Fs is white, all zeros is black, and anything in between makes the number go up and down. Now for her, she picked a color that was almost black, and that way it has a little softer look to it. Now at that point, we need to change the letters now so we can actually see them again. So we'll go ahead and click on Publish to make that change to our site. And now I'm going to scroll back to the top, and then I'll hit the left arrow to take us back one menu. And now we're going to go into the menu options. And from here, we can make the change to the color. So notice here's the link color. So I'll go back to Bethany's document. And I'll pick the off-white that she chose as opposed to this full white. And when we go back in here, we can change this link color. Now notice if I pick white, it's really, really bright. But if I pick the one that she chose, it's a little less than white. It's a little easier on the eyes. And then I want to go back and pick her menu accent color. And I'll show you how that works. Notice this blue here. When you come over here, you can see that little line there. Well, if I change that to the color that she chose, it's this green, and then I come down, there's another place down here where you can change the same thing. Now, when we come over here, it'll have this nice little green accent on it. Now we want to go ahead and change the background and link color for the drop-down to match what they are up here. So we do that under the drop-down styling. We go into here to our background color and set it to the background color we used. And then we'll scroll down to the link color and use the color that she chose there. And now when we come back over here, you'll see that those things match up just fine. In Bethany's menu, this menu is to the left over here. So if we scroll to the top, here's our option, position, left, center, right. We'll choose left, and we'll choose publish. And now the only thing left is to build the logo that's going to fill in this spot, and so we'll go ahead and do that next. Let's open up a new tab in our browser. Now, clearly there are lots of options for creating free logos out on the internet, but we found that designevo.com by far was one of the best choices out there to give you a high quality professional product as well at the same time being free. They also reached out to us originally because they were interested in a partnership with WebYoda Foundation to provide some of the proceeds to create more free training for those who couldn't afford it. So to get to their website, we're going to do designevo.com and then you can do front slash Web Yoda, and that takes you into the partnership link directly to the free logo section. And so you can see here, we are ready to go. We can start our new logo, and the logo is 100% free, no cost to us at all. Now, if it turns out you need a high-res version of your logo, uh, the link that you just went through is going to get you discounted rates. And on top of that, if you use the promotional code Web Yoda 30 off, it'll get you an additional 30% off if you decide to do that but you're not required to purchase anything, and I'll show you how you can download and use this particular logo for free. Let's go ahead and click on Make a Logo to start our free logo. And on the left, you'll see a bunch of different categories. If you want a particular interest, for example, business and finance, it'll bring up examples that may work for your business. If you're in the food and drink industry, it'll have ones that are relative to that, basically any industry you can think of. Now, in Bethany's case, she was interested in travel, so we can click on travel and then let's scroll down and see if we can find the logo that she settled on. The nice thing is, is these logos, you can change the colors out as well. You're not um, restricted to that. Let's see, where is she at? There it is. So there's the one she used. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And they're going to ask you, hey, you know, this, that, and the other, you want a name of it and the slogan. We're just going to skip that and go straight to making our logo however we want to make it. 
And now the logo has been added to our environment and it's ready to be edited. Now for Bethany's website, there were more than one type of logo she needed. She's going to need this logo that has your ultimatevacation.com built into it. She's going to need a favicon icon, the one that shows up on your browser tab. And then on the interior pages, if you go to About Us, she needed a third logo, which is this one right here. What well, turns out, this logo and this logo are the same thing. So basically, we're going to have the logo by itself, and then we're going to have one with this text next to it. So let's go back to the editor and get started on that. So first, we'll build a logo that won't have any text. And to do that, we're going to highlight the text that they gave us by default, hit delete, highlight the text, and hit delete. Now, the free logo can only be 500 by 500 max. So we're going to use that size, and we'll take this to the edge, and then we'll stretch this out. And since I need this to have a transparent background on the About Us page, what I want to do is come over here to Background, and I'm going to change the background to a color that is the light white color that Bethany has in her website. And that way it's going to be easier to replace that as a transparent color. Now we're going to change the colors in this logo to match the ones that Bethany used in her website. So we'll click on the logo and it shows the colors that are in the logo. In this case the yellow ones here, we'll change that first. So we're going to click on that and then click add and then we're going to change this to be the color that, of yellow she used, which won't be too much different, but a little bit. And then this blue was a green in her logo, so we're going to click that and add our green. And finally, this teal color is a little bit different as well, so we'll go ahead and add her color in there. And now we have all the colors of her logo in there. Bethany's logo is ready to download, and so we'll go up here and click the download. And notice there are two fancy purchase methods, and then right here is the link to get the free version. They want you to share on social media, if you don't mind, to have the opportunity to use the free version and we're going to click download and agree. Now this comes up in my download folder and it's inside of a zip file and then I can click inside that folder and what I'm going to do is just take one of these, I'll right click on the ping file, the PNG, I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my download folder and then I'm going to paste it. Now I can delete the one that I downloaded, that folder, and I'm going to rename this one to be logo Dot free. free version doesn't come as a transparent version and we need it to be a transparent version. So we need to go back to our browser and we're going to open a new tab and we're going to do a search for Lunapic. And then under Lunapic, one of the choices is transparent. We're going to choose a file from our computer in our download folder and we'll do logo free. Click on open. And there's our logo. And now if we click on the color we want to be transparent, it will choose that. And then we click on Apply. And it's applied. Now on the left we can click on Save. And then it has a choice. The default is to Save as Ping. And that is being downloaded right there. And if we go back to our download folder, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this file. And I'm going to rename it logo dash trans so I know that that's the transparent version of our file. So now we have our logo, it's transparent and it's free. Now since this logo is going to be used to sit on top of a video, I have a little bit of a concern of whether or not the resolution is going to be good enough to look correct with the motion behind it. So if I take this logo and I drag it to my browser in a new tab like this, you can see that it's a little grainy on the edges and that's the best it's going to get when we've got a size that's so small. Now if we look at Bethany's website, you'll see that it's super smooth around these edges. And the reason hers is super smooth is because we made the commitment and went ahead and bought it. doesn't mean you have to buy anything, but for our particular needs, it just made sense to go ahead and buy this. It wasn't really that expensive. I'll show you how we did that, but the free version certainly works as well. To purchase the high-res version, we go back to our logo maker. And then we click on the download and just look at the options. And let's just choose it. I'm not saying you have to do this, but we choose it. You come down to the box, have a coupon, Web Yoda, 30 off, redeem, and now you're at less than $20 to get a high-res version of your logo. So it's your choice, but now I'm going to show you what the difference looks like. So let's say the purchase goes through, and then now it's going to take you back to your screen where your logo was at. 
And now because we're going to have a purchase version, it can be larger than that. And we're going to make it larger. And the high res it's going to give us can be bigger than that. So let's put 1,000 and 1,000 and apply. Now we can take our logo and stretch it out really nice and big. Now we're ready to download the high res version. So we just click on download and it automatically starts downloading the high res version of that. Now it's successful and it shows it in our downloads folder. We'll go into the folder, choose high res, and then I'm going to right click on logo transparency. I'm going to copy that, go back to my downloads, and then I'll paste it in here. And so now I have the transparent version. Now I'm going to drag that to my browser over here just so we can compare the difference. Now we're ready to compare our two versions. So if we come up to our browser and click on the logo, you'll notice it's a little bit bigger and it's a little bit smoother. So you say, well, that's really not that much of a difference. I'm not sure what I paid for. Now over here, this is as large as it gets. Now over here, if I click on it, it'll show us how big it really is. And I'm telling you, I was shocked to see the resolution. When I look at this, I'm like, I cannot believe how nice a quality this is. And it was for less than $20. So for me, we got our money's worth, and we inserted it in her site, and it looked just absolutely wonderful on there. So I don't think we made a mistake. But once again, it is possible to use the free version, and in most situations, maybe it'll be just fine for you as well. Go ahead and clean some of these tabs up so we can make the second logo that we need. I don't need that, I don't need that, I don't need that. And so now we're back to where we're at. Now, at this point, if we click Save, it'll make a copy of that in our folder so that we have it permanently. So if you come over here, you can go into My Logos, and you'll see it shows up in there. And there's a free one that I had looked at earlier, and then I just saved it just because. And here's the one that we have the basic agreement on. Now, one of the wonderful things that I found out is that if you edit the one that's here, you can download the new version. So basically, you can put whatever you want in here. You can make unlimited logos inside of here as long as you didn't mind replacing the old one with the new one. So we're going to click on Edit so we can go ahead and make the secondary version of this. Now let's go ahead and review the second logo to remind us of what we're doing. So basically we're going to be building this logo now. So we're going to have the same logo here, but this is going to be going across this way. So go back into our logo maker. So the second logo is going to be a thousand across, but it doesn't need to be nearly as tall. So the first thing I'm going to do is shrink my logo down to say this big, put it in the middle of the screen. And then I'm going to change the dimensions to 1000 by say 200. And then I can bring our logo over here to the left and to the top. And then I'll stretch it out to fit perfectly just like that. Now the second logo is going to have the same background color as the menu bar. So we're going to come over here to background and then we're going to go in and add a color. And then we're going to add the color which is the background that we used in the menu bar for the website. Now we're ready to add the text to our new logo. So I'm going to click on text. And the first text she used has a type that's Modern Sans, and inside of that it's going to be this Julius Sands 1. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then it's going to be the word Your. Can't see anything yet, so let's change the color. The color is going to be the yellow that we use in the website, so now we can see it. Let's make it bigger. And now let's kind of drag it over here somewhere. And it might necessarily be the perfect spot yet, but we're going to go ahead and keep working with it. Now since I know the dot .com in the corner is going to be very similar to this, same font and everything, I can select the Your and come over here and choose this icon and make a duplicate of it. And then I can just drag that over here. And I can click on the text, change the text to be dot .com. Again, we will adjust sizes and things like that later. Now we're ready to do the word ultimate here. Now if we accidentally leave something highlighted and then we picked a new font, say this, it actually changes the font of the one that's selected and we didn't want to do that. They have these undo and redo buttons that are really helpful. So that undoes it and that redoes it. And that undoes it again. So now we want to put new text here. And to do that, the next font that she wanted to use is also a modern font and it's called Quicksand. So we'll click on that. Makes a box here. 
This particular one is going to be green. And then inside the box, we can type our new text, ultimate. And now let's give this a bigger size, let's say 93. And now we'll move this somewhere up here, let's say like that. And now we're ready to do our next word. Now the last word we're going to put in is vacation. And that's going to be this Roboto condensed. And it's going to be, let's say, size 100. And we'll change the color to the blue that's in the website. And now we'll click on this text to go ahead and change it. Say vacation. And now let's kind of drag it up into place. So now we got all the content. We just need to adjust everything to get it to fit just right. Now let's make some final adjustments to the positioning of the text. Let's move that basically there. Let's make this guy a little bit smaller. We'll move over here to the corner a little bit. Bring this guy down here just next to that. Like so. Bring ultimate down here so it lines up, let's say, like so. And then for this text, Bethany used this little magic wand thing and she turned on this glow. And you can barely see it, but it just adds a little bit of effect. It makes the letters pop out a little bit. And then she clicked on vacation and she also added glow. And basically, we're done with the new logo. The second one is complete. Now we're ready to download the second logo. And remember, since I purchased the slot that the logo lives in and I've updated the logo that's in that slot, when I go to download, I'm going to be downloading the new logo as a high resolution as well. So it's basically two for the price of one at this point. So now I can click on download. And just as before, it'll bring it up in a download folder for me. Now I'm going to click on the logo folder. Click on the high res folder. Now I don't need it to be transparent because in this particular situation, it's going to be in the menu. So I'm going to right click on the ping version. Copy that to the clipboard. Go back to downloads. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to rename this one Logo Menu and hit Enter. Now I'm going to drag that one over to my browser. And I'll look at it in the browser and look how great it looks. And then I'm going to click on it and see it is really, really nice. So again, now that I got two logos for the price of one, I'm pretty happy with myself at this point. Now let's go ahead and clean our browser up a little bit so we can proceed to start using our new logo. So we'll close this. Now here I'm going to close that window and I'm actually going to click save because this was tougher to make and so that's the version it saved inside of there. I'll close this, I'll close this, I'll close this. Now I'll go back to the WordPress dashboard by clicking the X at the top left. To add a logo to the menu bar you're going to go under appearance and then you're going to choose customize, you're going to choose header and then you're going to choose logo. Now we're going to do select logo. We currently don't have a logo in here, so we're going to do select files. We're going to choose our logo dash menu, hit open, hit select, and we're just going to skip cropping because we want to use the full thing. And it's going to fill in right here, and whoa, it's really big, so we're going to have to make some updates to that. But down here, we've got the width and height that we can set, so. Let's just try 200, 200 first. And that actually looks pretty good, but I think I'm going to make it just a tiny bit bigger on both of these so that the your and the dot com look a little bit bigger. And I think that's good, so we're going to go ahead and click on publish. And we'll come back over to our website and let's hit reload. And look at there, we're making progress. Now we're going to go ahead and add our favicon icon. That's the little icon that'll go right here. So we're going to go ahead and go back to our WordPress admin. And again, for the sake of being thorough, we're going to go back to the dashboard. And from here, you're going to go to Appearance, Customize, Site Identity, and then down here, we're going to select Image. And we currently don't have the image uploaded yet, so we're going to do Upload Files, Select Files, pick our logo transparent, our real big fancy one, click Open. Now we'll click Select and it is the correct cropping already so we'll say crop to image now the favicon's been added and we can click publish 
And now if we go up here and reload, it should show up. And it did. Well done. Now one of the things we need to do is define our home page. We have a home button, and that does take us to the page that would be our home page. But the main home page is going to be whatever it is when you come into here, which is just your URL by itself. And this is a page that isn't going to exist in our site. To set our home page, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin. And again, for the sake of being thorough, we're going to start at the dashboard. Under Appearance, we're going to pick Customize. Then we're going to choose Home Page Settings. And now we're going to choose Static Page. And for our home page, we'll pick Home. Now we can hit Publish. And now we come back over here and we hit the logo again. And that shows that it comes back with our empty page. It no longer shows that default page from before. So we have now updated our home page. So if you notice when we click on one of our pages, the names of these pages have index.php inside of the name. And what we want to do is we want to change our naming convention. And to do that, we're going to go back to our WordPress, go back to the dashboard. And from the dashboard, we're going to go to Settings. And then we're going to click on Permalinks. And this is the different types of naming conventions. The most popular is called Postname. And the reason is, is basically it's your URL and whatever you gave your slug name to be. It's clean and it's helpful for the search engine, so that's the one we want to use. So now we can scroll down, hit Save Changes. Now if we come back to our website and we reload, the About Us page just comes with the word About. Okay, so now it's working correctly. Now not all websites can benefit from a search option. For example, Bethany's website, um, the navigation itself, should get you to just about everything you need. So we're going to go ahead and remove the search option from her website. To do that, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin. And under Appearance from the dashboard, we're going to go to Customize. Then we're going to Header, Menu. And then we're going to scroll down until we see the option that has to do with the search box. Search icon style, it says drop down. And we're going to say Disabled. And notice it went away over here. We'll hit Publish. Now we go back to our website and we reload. And it's no longer there. Next I want to remove this little white line here because that's going to become a problem when we have our video pushing right against here. To do that, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin and we will go to the dashboard. And from the dashboard you go to Appearances, Customize, Header, General, and then we're going to turn Header Border Bottom off and Publish. And finally, we need to remove the space that's above the menu bar, but of course it'd make too much sense for it to be right here. So once again, we'll go back to our dashboard. From there, we're going to go to Appearance, Customize, and from here we're going to go to Top Bar, General, and where it says enable top bar, we're going to turn that off. And that one goes away. Hit publish. And everything's finally cleaned up nicely. Now let's go ahead and change the copyright information in the footer to say what we want it to say. And to do that, we're going to go back to the dashboard. And from here, click on appearance. Then customize. Then scroll to the bottom and choose footer bottom. And now we can change it to say whatever we want. In this case, we'll just put Web Yoda Inc. Now we'll hit Publish. And now notice it has this little OceanWP underscore date. That's a special code that says when you're actually on the real page to fill in a year. And so when we hit Refresh on our page, now it'll say Web Yoda Inc. So our empty page is totally complete, and we're ready to add real content to our website. And of course, we're going to start with building our home page. To do this, we're going to go back to our WordPress admin, go back to the dashboard, and now we're going to go into Pages and pick the page we want to work on, in this case, Home. Now notice, again, it doesn't say Elementor next to it because we haven't used Home page with Elementor yet. We click on Home. So the first time through, the Edit with Elementor button is here. We'll click on that. And it brings up our new page inside Elementor. 
Here's the tools we're going to use here on the left, and here's we're going to be building our page on the right. In the same way that driving a vehicle for the first time can be disorienting and maybe intimidating, using Elementor is going to have that feel at the very beginning as well. Now as opposed to doing a general overview of everything that it'll do step by step, what we're going to do is build pieces step by step and you're going to learn the overview as we go along. And the reason is, is only about 20% of Elementor are you ever going to use 80% of the time. So there's really no reason to cover a whole bunch of stuff you'll never use as opposed to just showing you everything that we're going to use on a regular basis. So the basic mechanics of the Elementor environment are you have widgets here on the left and they're the things you're going to use to build your page. And then you're going to have your content area over here where you're going to build it. Now the left item is for creating a new section, whereas the right item is for inserting templates. And the templates are basically sections that have already been created. And so one of the nice things is, is once you've built a section, you can save that as a template and later bring it back in to recycle code. All websites require content to create the website, so in your case, you're going to need content for your website, which is any text and information you have, as well as the pictures that go along with it. In our case, Bethany's provided that. For example, for the content, she's provided a Google Doc that has all of the text and information about what fonts and things she wanted to use to build the entire site. So that allows us to get a head start. And, and it turns out that collecting the content can be a little bit frustrating, but if you already have your content in an order, it's going to make it a lot easier to build your website. Now Bethany also provided a folder that had all of the different files she's going to need. So here's the files for the destinations. There's going to be a gallery. Here's some additional images, some testimonials, videos and audio, different related stuff. So again, being organized and having your content available, um, certainly some of it in advance, is going to make it much easier for you to build your website. Now suppose you don't have good access to images and videos for your website, what are your options? Below this video you'll find two sections, one with royalty free images, meaning you can use them and not have to pay a fee, and royalty free video clips where you don't have to pay a fee. For example, if we click on this link it takes us to a website called Unsplash. And from here if I do a search for, say, cloud light rays, there's the image that we used at the very beginning of the video. And then at that point, we just click the download. It goes to our download folder, and it's ready for us to use. Now, this site has lots of amazing pictures to use, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, on the off chance you don't have access to your own royalty-free images and videos. So now we're ready to add our video. And to do that, we first need to create a section. So we're going to click on this plus sign here. And it gives us a choice how many columns we want. Now, we can add columns as often as we want. We can adjust the columns, but this is kind of a default. Now for our beginning section, it's only going to have one column, so we'll choose that. And it made this little area up here. Now on the left-hand side, it has three different things you can do. You can control the layout, the style, and advanced features of the particular section. Now in this case, under layout, I'm just going to set the height to be fit to screen. And that made this really big area, and it's going to allow us to put a background video in that spot. Now to add a video background, you first have to have a video. And in our case, we're going to provide you with some resources below this video to get access to free video clips. The first one of those is YouTube. It's obviously the most popular. And one of the advantages to the YouTube environment is any video you use from YouTube, you don't have to worry about licensing because part of the agreement is, is if they put it in YouTube, it gives you the privilege to at least display it in your own personal website. Now in the search box, I'm going to type 4K Beach. And the 4K is for basically really high resolution videos and beach, pretty obvious. We're going to click on the first one. And here's this really nice beach scene. Now, we can actually just copy the URL up here to our clipboard. And we're going to be able to paste that into our website and make it a background. And this little ad is not going to show up in there. So let's go ahead and go back to our website. And now to do the backgrounds, we're going to click on Style on the left. And then the first section you see is about backgrounds. And the types of backgrounds you can choose from is classic, which is just basically an image, gradient, and movie. So let's review each of these to see how they work. So let's look at making a background here. We can click here to add an image. And then we're going to upload an image that we want to use. We're going to select files. And then we're going to go Actually, there's an easier way to do this. Let's use Bethany's folder. 
Then we're going to go to Images, and then we're going to just drag this over here. Now her image is loaded. We can just click on Insert Media at the bottom right, and it's going to place that image in there. Now initially our background is black, and we're like, well, that didn't give us what we were looking for. But if we come over here to Positioning on the left here, we can choose Center, Center. And then scrolling down, you'll see there's always extra options if you scroll. Let's set the size to Cover. All of a sudden now it kind of makes sense. The second option is this gradient, if you want to choose a gradient. And it's going to choose between two colors to gradiate between. So let's pick a second color. Pick this green. And so it gradiates from one to the other. Now once you've picked a color, you have to click on the color box to get the display to show you your options again. And now down here at Angle, you can choose the angle that you want that gradient to be at. You can also choose the type of gradient, so if it's linear, that's basically um, left or right, and then we could do radial that goes from inside to out. Now the last background type is the video, so we'll click on the video icon, and here where it says uh, video link, we just paste that video link that we had in there, and, and it'll just show up in the box for us. And that's just really spectacular. So out of nowhere, we went from having a website that didn't have any content in it, to having this pretty video. We like the way it looks so we're going to click on update at the bottom and now we can go back to our website and click on the home page and now we have this spectacular background for our home page. Now in Bethany's situation she created her own video so if we go to YouTube in another browser tab then we do a search on your ultimate vacation it'll come up as one of the top listings and here's the video cover she's going to use and in her section here it has the credits to all the people that contributed some of these were purchased and other ones we were just given the opportunity to use and we appreciate that we'll also put these video credits at the bottom of the video you're watching now so for us to use this video we simply copy that URL to the clipboard we go back to our website and in the box we put in the new URL and it'll show up with the new video we click on update, we go back to our website, we can click the home button again, and we see that it shows up. Now at this point we can go back to our home page and we're ready to start on our next section. And so to add our new section, in her case, if we go back to her home page, we're going to be looking to build this section right here. Now I know there's text on this, we're going to add the text to that video a little bit later, but we want to build this section right here. Now in this section we've got a column on the left that has an image and a column on the right that has content. And at the top and bottom of the section are these little swoosh things. We're going to add the swoosh things later once we've built the majority of this page. And so now to make the edit to this we can go ahead and go back to our website. So now we're back at our WordPress. And to do our new section, we're going to scroll down. We're going to choose a plus sign to add a new section. And in this case, it's going to have two areas, one for the picture on the left and for the content on the right. So we'll choose that. And now we have these two little boxes. We're going to want a picture in the left box. So let's go ahead and come to the left-hand side. I clicked on that plus to bring this up. And we're going to put an image in there. And we're just going to drag this over to that little box. And now we can choose our image, so we click on this. And now we're going to need to upload a new image. So we're going to go back to Bethany's folder and choose her profile picture. So we'll pick that one. Drag it over. It's done loading. Insert media. And now it's added to the page. We'll worry about resizing that in a minute. What we want to do now is put some content on this side over here. And to do that, I'm going to click on this box. Um, now what's interesting is there's three different types of things you can edit just to give you a good idea. Notice this tab, just like this one, that's for editing the section. So when I click on that, it shows me the section controls. So for example, if I click on this one, it shows me the section controls for this one. Now over here, notice there's this little block here. Well, that's for editing the column, which that picture's in. And this is editing the column that there's nothing in so far. 
whereas the little icon over here is for editing the contents of the column, in this case, this image. So we can edit the section, which gives us controls. We can edit the column, which gives us controls. And we can edit the item itself, which gives us controls. So now we want to add some text to the right column. And if I click on that box, it comes up with the options over here. And we're going to put a header in there first. So let's drag a header over there, just like that. And it shows up with some default text. Now it's possible to edit the text here, but you're better to edit it on the left hand side. It ensures you don't accidentally get some additional funny formatting in there. So we're going to come in here and put our new text, your ultimate vacation guide. And now I want to add another line of text below that. Now, when you're in a section and you want to get the widgets to show back up, you can click this little icon right here and it'll show your choices. And so we're going to drag another header over here. And notice how the blue line is where the widget will be inserted. And then we're going to change the text for that. And then we're going to add a third item. And we're going to do a text editor this time because we want to put a bunch of text under that. And then we'll come over here and we'll paste in our content for that. Now for this section, Bethany used the green background of the color scheme that she chose. So we're going to click on the Section tab, and then we're going to go to Style. And notice where the background thing is where we did the video before. We're going to choose Classic, which is going to give us the opportunity just to choose a color. Because you can either do just a color or you can do an image. And we're going to put in, paste in the green that she gave us. And then again, click on the color icon to close that out. And now we have the green background that's going to match what she had on our website. And at this point, we're ready to format the rest of this text to make it look correct. Let's take a quick field trip back to Bethany's site. And notice that she has some large text here that's white, medium text here that's black, and smaller text here that's white. And these turn out to be three separate fonts, and she gives us those fonts. So if we look in the document that she gave us, she told us what she wanted these fonts to be. And one of the things that's really nice about WordPress is that instead of having to define all the fonts every single time you use them, you can actually set defaults. And so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to go back to our WordPress. And now over here at the hamburger icon, we're going to click on that, and we're going to click on default fonts. Now the primary headline is the large white text Bethany used. The secondary headline is the medium text she used. And the body text is just the regular everyday I'm reading in a website text. Now accent text we haven't used and so we're not going to be setting that today. So we're going to go ahead and set the three types for Bethany's website. Now the primary headline for Bethany, she chose Lato. And then the weight we're going to leave as the default is 600. Basically, the weight is how bold something is. And when you look inside of there, default, you got bold, and then you've got a gradiated scale. And six, I think 400 is basically um, regular bold. So 600 is a little bit more bold than that. Next, for the secondary headline, she wanted to use Roberto Slab, and that ends up being the default in this case. So that worked out well. And we'll also use the same weight for. Um, that's the default there. And then we're going to click on the body text as our last one. And for body text, she chose Open Sans. So we'll go ahead and choose Open Sans, and we'll also use the default weight for that. Now at this point, we can hit Apply, and now all of our default fonts have been set. Now one typical question that comes up often is, how do you know what the fonts are? Well, let's go over here to our tab, and then we're going to type in Google Fonts and hit Enter. And then from here, just click on the first link. It'll be fonts.google.com. And these are all the fonts that are built into WordPress um, that are usable by you. And they're broken down by the different types of categories and trending fonts and different things like that. So basically, if you're interested in a certain font, let's say, well, what does Lato look like? Well, I can go and type it in, and then I can see, well, that's what Lato looks like. Now with our default font set, we can go in and set the color and size of the different fonts we're using. So we're going to head back to our WordPress. And just a reminder, remember if you click here, 
you're editing the section, which is this entire area. It's the, co the information that applies to that whole area. If you edit in either of these little black boxes, you're editing the particular columns. And if you edit the little right edge of these, these are for the particular items that are within the columns. So there's three levels of editing. Now in this case, we want to change the size of this particular piece of text. So we're going to click on the little blue box here, and it brings up the controls for that on this side. Now remember there was something called a primary heading, which is the large text that's white, and the secondary heading, which is the medium text that is black. Well, to choose those, it's down here in, under this HTML tag. We want to choose H1, which is going to make the primary heading um, the choice for this text right here. Now we're going to click on the style options for that, and typography is going to allow us to set style for that particular font, whereas above that is text color. Now that text is supposed to be white, so we'll click here and we'll go ahead and choose white, and again click on the little box to exit out of there. So now our text is white. Now we can do the typography, and the typography is going to allow us to set the individual attributes for the font. So for example, if we want to change the size, we can scroll in and out on this, or we can manually set it. We're going to set it to 50 in this situation. And then the weight, we could set that. That's going to be our default. Now for transform, if you want it to be all uppercase, it'll do that for you, all lowercase. Um, capitalize, which makes the first letter capital on each word. Um, normal, and we're just going to stick to the default. Also under style, you can pick normal, italic, or oblique, uh, in this case obviously default. And the decorations allow you to say whether it's going to be underlined, overlined, line through, or none, or choosing default. And at the bottom, you can choose a line height, which is how much space is between the lines. And you can space how much, or choose how much space is between the letters. And by putting nothing in these boxes, you're going with the defaults on those as well. And for me, I'm almost always using the defaults because they're set to a standard for a reason. All right, so that typography is fixed. Now, text shadowing allows you to set text shadowing around it to a particular color. So let's say we want to have it to be um, black. We can choose black, and then as we scroll up or down, you notice that the letters over here are getting um, a line around them, bigger and smaller. And if I close out of that, I can choose a blend mode. So it gives you a lot of different options as far as ways of having special effects on your text. Now for me, I'm just going to have normal, and I'm not going to have that particular feature on this one, so I'll pick default. Now I'm going to set the text for the next box, so I'll come over here and click on that. And I'm going to go to Style, and we want to use black for this one, so we'll choose black. We'll exit out of that. And then under Typography, it turned out that she had decided, even though her secondary um, headline she wanted to be Roberto Slab, that in this particular use she wanted to make it Montserrat. And so we're going to choose that. And we'll set the size to 32. We can exit out of that. And now we'll click on the text for our edit box. We're going to go to style. This text is supposed to be white. So we'll choose white. Close that out. And now we'll go to typography. And default is the font. And for the size, let's put 18. Now we've closed out of that. And we're ready to edit the settings for the picture. Now one problem is, even though this is a great picture, it's way too big and it's certainly not what Bethany has on her site. Notice how much smaller it is. And the reason is, is that the default when we gave it two columns was 50%. And clearly she's made hers less than 50%. So we'll go back to our WordPress. And then we'll, we'll click on the column itself. And now we can make a change. Instead of 50, let's try 30. That looks a little bit more like what she had. We'll click on Update. We'll come over here. We'll reload our page. And that looks significantly more like what she had. Now at this point, notice that this stuff is centered and ours is not. So we want to go back and make that center adjustment as well. 
So we can come back over to our WordPress. And then we'll click on this text. And at the bottom, we can center it. And then we'll click on this text. And at the bottom, we can center it. And now we can update and go back to our website and hit reload. And now it's also centered. If you notice in our version, there's a lot of space on either side, whereas in Bethany's are not. So this particular section, she has full width instead of boxed in. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress. And then for that particular section, we're going to select that section. And then on the left, we're going to turn on section stretch. And then we're going to turn on content full width to be full width there, like that. And then we're going to click on update. And now we'll go back to our site and we'll hit reload. And now it basically looks the same as her site. Now we want to go back to Bethany's website and notice the dividers that it has with the little wave looking thing and the extra space at the top and the extra space at the bottom and again the wave thing. We're going to go ahead and make those updates to our version. So if we go back to WordPress, the first thing we're going to do is add some space in the top and bottom of this section. So let's go ahead and click on the section itself. And then if you go to the Advanced tab, we can add padding to it. Now if you add padding in here, it adds it all the way around. So for example, if I put 40 in here, it'll do it at the top and the bottom and the left and the right. Well, if I don't want it that way, I can click on this little guy here. So I didn't really want it on the left and the right so much, maybe. But I wanted it on the top and the bottom. So that allowed me to add the spacing at the top and the bottom, just the way we wanted to. Now we're going to add the spacer in between here that looks like a little wave. And it actually is added to the bottom of the top section. So we're going to click on the top section and make it the active one. We're going to go to Style, and at the bottom of Style, there's a thing called Shape Divider. And inside Shape Divider, you can put a divider at the top or at the bottom, or both. We're going to choose Bottom. And then we're going to choose the Waves Brush, and it shows up down here. And now we're going to click on to change the color and use the green that Bethany used. Exit out of that. And then we're going to set the height of this to, say, 60. And now we have that wave divider there. Now to put the wave divider at the bottom, we're going to come into this section. We'll scroll down. And then we're going to go back into our style for this one. And we're going to scroll down, shape divider. And we're also going to put it on the bottom. And then we're going to choose our shape of the wave's brush. And it's the white, the same as hers. You see if it come over here, hers has a white one at the bottom. So that's okay. But it's too tall. So we'll go in here and change the height of that to, say, 60. And then there's not enough space in between these anymore. It's a little close. So we'll go back to our Advanced tab. And where we had 40 for the bottom, let's try 60. And maybe 70. So now we have enough space. We have the divider at the bottom and the divider at the top. So we can hit Update. And then go back to our website and hit Refresh. And we have the divider at the top. And we have the divider at the bottom. And we're ready to do our next section. Now we're going back to Bethany's website to review the next section, which are these three call to action areas. And notice when you move your mouse over the icon, they pop out a little bit. And over the buttons, they pop out a little bit. We're going to create one of these call to action areas, and then we'll make two copies and then just change the content on those. So let's go back to our WordPress. And now we're going to make a new section. And this section is going to have three columns in it. And now for the first column, we're going to click on that. We're going to want to add what's called an icon box. So we're going to scroll down and there's our icon box. We're going to drag that over and look at that little blue line. Where that blue line is, that's where it's going to insert it at. And now I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to click on this icon to bring the list up again. And I'm going to grab a button and we're going to bring it down here and we're going to add a button below that as well. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and center our button so our button's in the right spot. Now we want to style our icon box, so we're going to click on that to make it active. 
And up here where it says star, we're going to pick sun because that's the one we used. The title we're going to use is destinations. And the content is that. Now at this point, we want to make the changes for colors and things to this. So we're going to come into the style tab. And under primary color, we're going to pick the yellow that Bethany used in her website. Close that out. And then under content, it has two areas. It has the title, which is this guy, and it has the description, which is this guy. And for the description, I mean, for the title, we're going to set the color to the teal that she used. It was in her list of colors. We'll close that out. And now under typography, we're going to make the font a little bit bigger. Let's say 28. And then for the description size of the font, let's go down here and make it a little bigger. We'll choose 18. Go out of that. Now we'll scroll back to the top and under advanced, we want to add a little spacing around here. So for our padding, let's put 20 all the way around that. It gives it a little space around there. And then notice that our icon doesn't bounce. So let's go back to the style and under here it has normal and has hover. And basically when you hover over it's when it happens. So we're going to click on hover. And then to hover animation, we scroll down and it says bounce in. And now when we move our mouse over, it bounces like the other one. Now, I don't want these words to spread out in this section as they are. So we're going to click on that. We'll go into our style for that section. At the bottom is the content. And this is the description. So we'll go into typography and scroll to the bottom of that. And we'll see that there's a line height. And let's just put that at 1.3. That's a lot better. Now let's make some changes to our button. So we'll click on the button item. And the text on the button should say learn more. The link should be for our destinations to make a page. And then we're going to set the color of the button under style. We'll just click on the background color and put Bethany's green in there. And close that out. Now we're ready to update. And we can go back to our website and see what it looks like. So we'll click up here. And then we'll do reload. And our call to action is ready to go. And we can make our two duplicates now. To make our two duplicates, we'll go back to our WordPress. And then we'll come over and look at the, or highlight this icon in the left-hand corner. That's the column icon. If we right-click it, there's an option to duplicate. If we right-click it again, there's an option to duplicate. Well, now we got to come over here and right-click and delete the two that were extra that we had. And right click and delete that one. So now we have our three areas and we just need to update the content on those and maybe do some magic and make that happen pretty quick. Now our content has been updated for the two here and we're ready to hit update and go back to our WordPress website page. Hit reload and there we have all three of our call to actions. Now we want to add our wave divider at the bottom. And on Bethany's site, it's that teal color. So we're going to come back over to our WordPress. We're going to select this section, because it's going to go at the bottom of this section. Then we're going to go to a style. And in inside of shape divider, we're going to choose the bottom one. And then we're going to come inside of here and choose waves brush. We're going to set our color to that teal. Close that out. And we're going to set the height to 60. And now we notice that there's some, clearly there needs to be more space here. So to do that, we're going to go into advanced. And then we're going to unlock this. And then we're just going to add a whole bunch at the bottom, let's say 70. And maybe we'll try 80. And that looks good. So we can hit update. Go back to our site. Hit reload. And the call to action section is complete. Okay, okay, it's almost complete, but when you go across these buttons, they don't light up, and they don't bulge out. So let's come back to our WordPress. We'll click on a button. We've got to go to Style, and we've got to set the hover for those. And then the background color is going to be Bethany's yellow. We'll close out of that, and then the animation is going to be our bounce in. And now that one bounces, and then we're going to magically do the other two just the same. And now they all work. And we can hit update, get back to our website, hit reload, and we really are done now. 
Now we're ready to do the next section. On Bethany's website, the next section is this travel tip section, basically frequently asked questions about travel. And it uses a header, and then it has this accordion effect where you're able to put content inside of each of these items. And at the bottom, there's a button. So we want to head back to our WordPress. And we'll add a new section at the bottom. It's going to be one column. And now in that column, we want to first put a header. So we'll add that in there. And then we'll pick another item, which is called an accordion. We'll scroll down, and that one's right there. And then finally, we're going to put a button in there at the very bottom. And so now we have the three items we're going to put in there. Now we just need to add content and style them. So to start, let's just go ahead and change out our content. So we'll click on that. And the header for that will be Top 5 Travel Tips. And the first item in our accordion, if we click on the accordion, it comes up over here. First item in there, we're going to put the name here. It's going to be Make a List. And then we can scroll down here, and this is where the content's going to go. So we'll need to delete the content that's in there. And then put our own content. And so now we have our first one. And now we're ready to edit the second one. So we can come down here, and we click on the second one right there. And the title for this one is that. And then we'll replace our content. And you can stretch that box so you can see exactly what you're putting in there. And now we have two of these. See, they both work. And then you can add a third item, like that. And we'll put our title here for this one, like so. And then our new content. And we can scroll down. Actually, we can close that one by clicking there. And then we can add another one for our th um, fourth of five. Put the title there. Put our content there. Close that one down and add our last one, like that. And so now this is where the title will go. So this one will be sunscreen. And the content, sunscreen's good. Use sunscreen. And now we have a fully functional accordion with a title and a button. But we still have some more work to do on these. Now we're ready to style this section. So we'll start by styling this header. And we'll come into the style section. And the color for this header is going to be Bethany's yellow. And then we're going to go into typography to set the size. And let's go ahead and set that at 30. And we can close that out. Now we'll click on the accordion. Go into the style for that. And then under title. We'll set the color of the titles to white. Now that's obviously going to make it disappear for the moment. So we'll pick white. Close that out. And now we'll go into the background, and we're going to set the background to that teal that we use. But to do the teal, it needs to be in the section. So we need to click on the section, and then go to style, because we want the whole section to be teal. And then we get a background type, classic, and we're going to set the color and set it to that teal. And all of a sudden everything shows back up. We can close out of that. Let's go back into our accordion. And we want to go back to the style for the title. Because under typography we wanted to make that font a little bit bigger. So let's say 30. And then close that out. And then for the content itself, we want typography. And we're going to set that content to say 18. And then we need to set the color for that to black. And that might do it. Now that looks kind of big though, so let's change that out. Go back into Title. And Typography. Try 20. And if we click on that, that looks really good. Okay, so now we need to work on the button. But I'm going to actually delete the button. And I'm going to delete it for two reasons. Number one, it's going to be styled the same as these. So basically, if I make a copy of this one, I don't have to put all the bells and whistles on it. I just have to change a few settings on it. And secondly, I want to save this section as a template so we can use it on our Travel Tips page later. So let's go ahead and delete our button. So we can come over here and right-click and choose Delete. And now we want to save this as a template. 
Now to save this as a template, we go up to the section tab, we right click on it, and then we choose save as template. And then we give it a name, so I'm going to say your ultimate vacation, dash, and we're going to call this travel tips. And now we have that particular travel tip saved, and when we go to our travel tips page, we'll be able to insert that, and we'll have to build it again, so that'll be real helpful. And when we get there, we'll show you how to do that. So I'll close that out. Now we're going to make a copy of this button. So I'm going to right-click, duplicate, and now I can drag this button down here, and notice it. Bam, right center, just the way we want it. So now all we have to do is make the updates to this button. So this button, if we click on it, over here is where we need to change our text. And the button should say, more travel tips. And the link will be that. And now we've got everything set up and ready to go. We can click on update, go back to our page. Hit reload, see our new accordion in action, everything's working. Now the one thing is, this is a little close to the top, so should, we should add some um, space at the top and the bottom, and we're going to find that we do that all the time. So we're going to come in here, get back into the section, go into the Advanced tab, unlink all those, and then for the top, we'll say put 20, try 30. And for the bottom, 30. And that should do it. We'll do update. Back to our site. Hit reload. And that section is ready to go. Now one thing I forgot to do is that in Bethany's sites, there's no lines around it. In our site, there is. And it actually turns out that there are lines around hers. You can't get rid of the lines. But you can tell the lines to be the same color as the background, which basically makes them go away. So we're going to do the same thing on ours. So we're going to come back over here. And then we're going to choose the accordion. And then we're going to go into style. And then the border width, nothing matters. You put zero, it doesn't work. Uh, but you can come in here and change it and use that same teal. And then when you go to update, and you go look at the site, those lines will disappear. And so we have the effect we want. Now, uh, I went ahead and went back and resaved our template without the line. So when we use our template later, it'll be correct as well. Now we're ready to do our next section. And on Bethany's website, you'll see it says image carousel. And the dividers actually um, overlay into the images. So they're actually inside. Both of those are inside that section. So we'll be adding those as well. So let's go back to our WordPress. And then we're going to scroll to the bottom. Create a new section, one column, and on the right we're going to make this full stretch, full width, with columns having no gaps. We're basically wanting this thing to be as wide as possible. Now we're going to click on this icon to bring up our list, and we're going to do the image carousel, and it's going to be located a little bit farther down. Drag that over. And now it's entered in there. Now we need to add images. So we can click on images here. And we're going to upload images. Then we're going to go to Bethany's image folder. And inside of her folder is a gallery. And then we're going to select all of these. There's 24 of them. Drag them over to the left. And it'll insert all of those for us. Now our images have uploaded and we can click on create a new gallery and just choose insert. And here's our gallery. Now we're going to set the image size to full. And then we're going to tell it to do three at a time to show three at a time. I think that's the default. And then we're going to do slide three at a time. Now I like the arrows, but I don't really like the dots. So we're going to scroll down, and there's a place to modify the navigation, and we're going to choose just the arrows. Now we need to put our little dividers on the top and the bottom, and to do that we need to pick this particular section, go to Style, and under Shape Divider we're going to do the top one first, 
and we're going to pick our same wave brush and then we're going to set the color to the teal that Bethany likes and then we'll close that out and then we're going to set the height to 60 and it's not showing up but the reason is is we need to turn on this bring to front because the carousel is sitting on top of it so now we can see it and now we're going to pick the bottom we're going to pick waves brush we're going to pick color white and close that we're going to pick 60 and then we're going to turn that on and now we have a fully functioning carousel now it's interesting if you come in here and try these different ones you'll see they do lots of stuff so don't just decide on one you can actually go through and try a whole bunch of different things it does neat stuff I just happened to pick this one actually Bethany picked it because it looks really good for what she's trying to do so now our carousel is complete we can click on update go back to the website hit reload and we're ready for the next section this carousel we're actually going to use on multiple pages so let's go ahead and go back and right click on the section and save as template and we'll give it a name your ultimate vacation and this will be carousel save it and now we have these two that we'll be able to recycle and use later now we're ready to go to our next section and that section will be the testimonials now I notice the animation and stuff we're going to show you how to do all that animation later but at this point we're just going to learn how to build this testimonial page it's going to have a header it's going to have one testimonial and then we'll clone it and then we'll make another clone to have four of them total and a button at the bottom so that's our goal so let's go ahead and get started and we're going to go over to our WordPress start a new section we'll have one cell we're going to make it a stretch section full width and then inside of it we're going to put some different widgets so let's go to the menu of widgets we're going to have a header at the top now pick another widget and then we're going to have this intersection and basically what an intersection is it's kind of a sub widget um, basically it allows you to put two columns within it and the reason why I'm using this is that when you display this on a mobile device whatever's in this cell will nicely wrap under the one that's there and since all these testimonials are kind of look the same but some may be taller than others this is going to make it look better on a mobile device and then at the bottom we're going to need a button so we'll come up here and we'll right click on that and we're going to do duplicate and we'll drag that button down here somehow now we got them in order that was tough. So next we're going to put the text that we need to have in here, which is testimonial. So we'll put that there. And then we want to go to the style right here. And we're going to set the color of this to Bethany's green. And then we're going to go to do the size of this. So we'll set the size to 40. And then Bethany had a special font she wanted to use. I'm not even going to begin to try to pronounce that. And we're going to use a weight of 300. Close that out. Go back to content. We'll center it. Now we need another widget. We're going to scroll down. We want an image box. Drag it in there. And notice that our image is at the top right now. We want our image to the left, just like that. And now we need the image. So we're going to come over here and click on image. And we need to upload some images. And to do that, we're going to use Bethany's folder. So we'll go back to here and then under testimonials. And we'll go ahead and drag all these in at once. And then we're going to pick that one, I think, is the first one. Let all those load. And that's the item we're going to pick for the first testimonial. So we'll insert that media. And then we're going to click on the heading for this. And the heading is going to be that. Now, in HTML, instead of just an ampersand, you're supposed to put that particular code. So you want to make sure that you do it the same way that's there so that it works in all browsers. Now we need the content that's going to go in here. So we'll put that in there like that. And now we have a testimonial built. 
And now we just need to style it to be the same as Bethany's. So now we'll go over to our Style tab. And this determines the space between here and here. So let's say if I put 20 in there, it makes it a little bit bigger. And this decides how big this is. So let's say we'll put 40 there. And at the bottom, we can modify the content for these two things. For example, the title. We want that to be black. So we'll scroll down and choose black. We can close that out, and then we can check in on the typography, see what our options are there. Let's go ahead and set this to 20. That might have been the same, but it looks good. Close that out, and then when we go down to the typography for the bottom, and scroll and look at that. Go ahead and make that 15. That's a little bit bigger. And that should do it. The only weird thing is there's a little tick mark in there, so let's go in and change that and get rid of that. Now we have one testimonial that's completed. Now to build a second one, we just right click and choose duplicate. And then we can drag that one by that little handle there over here. And now we can right click on this section, this intersection, and duplicate. And now we have the four that we need. And then finally we need to update this button to do exactly what we need it to do. So it's going to say more testimonials. And the link is going to be testimonials. So our testimonial section is complete, except that we need to change the content on these other three. And we're going to go ahead and use some magic again to change those all at once. And now all of our testimonials are updated. And we're going to have a testimonials page. So again, we want to make ourselves a template. So we're going to right click there. Save as a template. Name our template. Your ultimate vacation. Testimonials. Hit save. And now we have three templates to use later on. We'll close that. We'll hit update. Go back to our site. Hit reload. And the testimonial is there. We just will have our little border thing that we'll end up doing at some point. Let's go ahead and get started on our next section. We'll go to Bethany's website. And we're going to build this parallax section down here at the bottom where this image slides like that really nicely. And then we're going to put a join email list in that. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress. And we're going to go to the bottom. And we're going to create a new section. One column. And then under advance for that column, we're going to unlink those. We're going to go to 130 for the top, 130 for the bottom. That spreads that out. Now we're going to go to style. And we're going to set the background type to just a regular image. And we're going to choose our sunset image. Insert media. And now at the bottom, we're going to set attachment to fixed. Scroll down a little bit and set size to cover. And that's starting to look nice. Next we're going to go back up and we're going to add an inner widget. And then we're going to delete one of these cells. We're going to set the width of our inner widget to say 500. Then we're going to go back to our widgets and we're going to put a header in there for now as a placeholder. And then for this particular column, we're going to come in and set a background. And let's say we'll set the background to that color. We're going to give it some transparency. If we come down in the border section, we can round the corners with border radius. Let's say 12. And now we'll go ahead and add our separators for this. So we'll come into that section. We'll go to Style, scroll down. And for our dividers, we're going to do the top one. It's going to be white. So we'll pick our waves brush. We'll pick a color. It's already white, um, so we don't have to do that. And we'll set a height of 60. And then we'll choose bottom, waves brush. We'll set the color on this one to Bethany's black. And we'll close out of that. And we'll set our height to 60. And we have that piece completed.
We'll click on update. We'll go back to our website. Hit reload. And we have that working. Now we need to put in our join email list form in here. So we're going to go back to our WordPress. And now we're going to need to exit out of this page and go back to the dashboard because we're going to work on the contact form 7. It's going to allow us to build the mechanics that are going to make that work. So on your left hand menu you'll see a contact and you can click on that. And then when you scroll down you'll see there's already a form there. We're going to click on that form. And we're actually going to make our contact us form and then we're going to make our join form so we don't have to come back here later. And we're just going to rename that contact us. And I can hit save just to make that change. Now if you scroll down you'll see they've already done most of the work for us but I want to show you how the mechanics of this work. So this particular form is going to have your name, your email, a subject, and your message. Well suppose that you wanted to have the telephone number in here. I can go in here and add a um, spot in between. I can click on this telephone option here and then I'm just going to click insert tag. Now all we need to do is make the content that goes along with this look the same as the other. So for example I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to paste it there. Now if I take the telephone tag and I copy that, I can just paste it where the one on this one was. And so now we effectively have the telephone number that's going to be in the form itself. Now notice up here in the text in the email fields there's an asterisk. That asterisk tells it to be required field. So if we want the telephone field to be required, which we do in this case, we put an asterisk there and now that will be required. Now for the label, we'll just simply rename it to your phone. You can make it whatever you want. And notice that it says required here, but that's just text. We actually had to put the little bitty asterisk here to make it required. We're just saying tell the person that's going to use the form that this is going to be a required field. Now obviously this is just one example. We added phone, but you could add any of these other things with a text area, drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, and it'll do all the mechanics for you. You'd just be instructing on what you wanted to do. At this point we want to hit save and that will tell the system that we have this new field in there. And then we're going to go into the mail tab and make some adjustments in here. Now the first thing we're going to do is set the to. The to field is where do you want the email to go to. By default it's the admin you set up for your WordPress environment. But we want in this case to go to comments at yourultimatevacation.com. You can make this go to any email you want. So you could make it to go to your personal email if you chose as well. Next we're going to make an adjustment to the from field, meaning who did the email come from, and we're going to put no reply at yourultimatevacation.com. Now obviously that's not who it's really coming from, but that keeps the server happy. Who it's really coming from is under these additional headings that they already put there for you, where it says your-email, and if you look back at the form, that's the email they've submitted. So in reality it's going to work the way we want, and we're going to keep the server happy by setting that. Finally we want to scroll down to the body of the message and currently in the body of the message it does not have the phone number we added on the form itself. So we can come up here and we can highlight this. That is our field for our telephone. And then inside of our form at the bottom we can make some space. And we can put phone and then we can add our tag. And now it will add that field when we receive an email. So we can come back up here, hit save. And now our contact form is complete. Next we want to make our join our email form. And to do that we're going to click on contact on the left again. That brings up our list. And it has the contact us we created. If we highlight that we can make a duplicate of it. Now that duplicate comes up automatically. And then we can change the name of it right here. Now we're going to put our name for our new form in here. We'll call it join our email. We'll scroll down and look at the fields for the form. In this form we only need the email and the name of the person so we're going to delete those three. And so now it just has the person's name and their person's email. And we can click on save over here on the right. And now we're going to make some adjustments to our mail tab and if we go in there and scroll down where it says subject we're going to change this out and we're going to change that to say join our email. The rest of this can stay the same. And in the bottom section we only need the person's name and email so we're going to delete those. We'll come over here and put a space here. 
the email, get rid of the less than and greater than. Now we'll just be receiving their name and email. Scroll back up, hit save. And now both of our forms, our join email form and our contact form, are ready to be inserted into Elementor. So now we'll go back to Elementor. So we'll click on Pages. We're going to scroll down and click on Home, because that's the page we're working on. Edit with Elementor. And then we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And we want to make an adjustment here. We're going to add our form in right there. To add our form, we're going to go down and we're going to pick the very bottom one, which is going to be this Void Contact Form 7. And we will just enter it right there. And it's just an empty form at this point. And then we're going to pick the contact form it's going to be, and it's going to be our Join Our Email. And now we want to change some of the styling settings, so let's go ahead into the styling. We'll click on that. And at this point we're going to need a tiny bit of coding. Um, in our first field at the top we're going to put color colon white semicolon. Then we're going to scroll down to where it says all input CSS. We're going to put the same thing, color colon white semicolon. And then we're going to scroll down one more time. And we're looking for the part where the submit button is. And we're going to put the same thing again, color colon white semicolon. And now we're also going to add one more piece of code here, which is the background color, background colon, and then this is the code for Bethany's yellow. Now at the end of that, you'll notice we put a semicolon. Every time you do CSS, there's a semicolon at the end of each of those. And that particular piece of code made this yellow button, and it made the text on it white. And then the two that we added up here, the, the second one we added, changed the code that's inside of these boxes so that it shows up white. And then the very top one at the top was doing the your name and your email. So that's what that did. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this column that's inside of here. And then we're going to go to Style. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, go to Typography, and then hit Center. And that allowed us to center these different things here to make that look nice. Now we want to change the header up here to be what it's supposed to say. So we're going to come back over here, and in this box we'll put join our email. And now we'll go into style, typography. We're going to set the size, let's say 28. And we'll make the color, we'll say white. And that should do it, so we can now hit update and go back to our website and hit reload. And now our site has a fully functional join email form. So we're ready to do the next section, which is going to be the footer. Let's head back over to Bethany's website, and we're going to look at the footer. We're going to have a picture of her as our guide. We're going to have a follow us section. We're going to have a contact info section, and then we're going to have navigational section. Let's go see how to add those. And first, let's go back to our WordPress so we can get started. To edit the footer, we need to exit back to the dashboard. So we're going to click the hamburger icon and choose Exit to Dashboard. Now on the left-hand side, we're going to choose Appearance, and then we're going to choose Widgets. And you'll notice over here there's four sections. Here's the footer 1, footer 2, footer 3, footer 4, and those relate to 1, 2, 3, 4. Now for footer 1, we're going to put a picture of Bethany. So let's scroll down and find the Image Widget. We click on that, and then you want to choose footer 1, add widget. Now we can put a title, your vacation guide. We'll pick a picture, and we'll use the one we already have for her right here. Add to widget. And for a link, we're going to put a link to what will be the About Us page. We'll hit Save, and come back over here, and Reload. And we have our first section. So let's go back over here and get ready to do section 2. And for footer 2, we're going to use the social icon, so we'll scroll up and find that widget. Choose footer 2, add widget, and then we're going to use all the defaults, but we're going to be adding in her social media right here. And we'll use a little magic to make that happen real quick. Now we can scroll down and click save. Go back to our page, hit reload. And now we have a fully functional follow us section with all of our social media. We're ready for the next section. Come back over here. And for footer 3, we need to scroll to the top. We're going to choose the contact info option. And we'll pick footer 3. Add widget. 
And for this one, we're going to use a lot of their defaults, but we'll change out a couple things. For example, we're going to put text and say, we would love to hear from you. Now for the address section, we're not going to do that on this section, so we're going to take those out. And for the phone section, we'll just change out the phone number that'll be for this website. For the mobile and fax section, we won't be using those, so we'll take all that information out. And then for the email section, we'll put the email for this website. And last, for the website, we're going to actually use this to do a message us box as opposed to doing a website. So for a title, we're going to put message us. And for the URL, we're going to make it go to our contact us form. And for our URL text, we're going to put message us now. We won't have any Skype, so we'll turn that off. We can hit save. Come back to our website. Hit reload. And there's our third section ready to go. So for our final section, we'll go back to WordPress. And we're going to do a custom menu. That's how we're going to get the navigation in there. So we'll scroll back up near the top. There's the custom menu widget. And we're going to do that for footer 4. Add widget. And again, mostly defaults. We'll set the title to where to next. Then we'll choose our menu, which is the main menu we have. For our link color, we're going to choose the color that was Bethany's white. And then for the hover color, we're going to use Bethany's green. And the rest is just defaults. We can hit save. Go back to our website, hit reload. And we have a fully functioning footer. Now notice that our little wave separator is a different color, and that's because that's the one that Bethany wants to use for the menu and for the footer. So we're going to actually have to go back into the customized section to change the footer background color. So let's go ahead and head back to WordPress. And from here, we're going to go to Appearance, Customize, and we're going to scroll down and go into Footer Widgets. Scroll to the bottom of that, and where it says Background Color, We'll change this to Bethany's black. We'll hit publish. Come back over here. Hit reload. And now our footer is complete. Now that also means that our entire first page is complete. And I think hopefully at this point you're like, wow, you know, this actually is doable. I can make this happen. It may take longer than I might have thought it would, but it's going to be easier than I thought it would as well. So we're ready to get started on the About Us page. And to do that, let's go ahead and go back to WordPress. And from here, we can just close that, and we'll go into Pages, and we'll pick our About page, and then just click on Edit with Elementor to get started. Now notice now our new blank page has our footer on it, as will all of our pages. So we'll go back to Bethany's website, and we want to see what her About Us looks like. So it's going to have a little movie at the top, special version of the logo. We're going to see how to do that. Some text on the left, picture on the right and our carousel, so we'll be inserting the carousel that we've used before. And we're going to go to YouTube, so we'll make a new tab. And then I'm going to do a search for Landscapes Nature Relaxation 4K. And we'll pick on the first one. Now notice that this video has the background that I want to use, but it also has a bunch of text and other stuff going on. Another problem is if you click out way farther in the video, it's about something other than what we're trying to do. So the trick is, is that we only want to use a certain piece of the video. So if we click back over here, we can find a starting point we want to start at. So for example, anywhere in here, if I want to have a starting point, I can just choose to pause it. And when I pause it, for example, I pause it right at one minute. When I right click on this and then choose copy video URL in current time, and I paste it in my browser, it shows 60. What's the number of seconds? Well, that can be my starting point. And then let's say later on in the video, I kept playing it for a little bit, and it went forward in time a little bit. Then I can pause it again. I can right-click on that, choose copy video URL with time, and now it says it's 186. So I can have a starting and ending point, and we want to use those in our video to only loop through that small piece of time. Copy that URL to our clipboard, and go back to Elementor, and we're ready to add in that background at the top of this new page. So we're going to click on there. We're going to choose a single section. We'll go to Style, and we're going to do Video, and we're going to paste the video name in there. 
And then I'm going to give it the starting and ending point in seconds. So 60 to start with. And I chose 130 seconds for my ending point. And you can see the little video playing in here. We're going to give it some space. We'll unlink that. At the top we'll put 30. And at the bottom we'll put 60 because we know we're going to do our wave divider. Go into style first and then scroll down and choose shape divider. We'll go to the bottom. And then we'll pick our wave. And then we'll set our color to Bethany's green. Set our height to 60. And now we've got this section getting close to what we want it to be. So now we're going to go ahead and choose to put another widget in by clicking that icon. We'll put a header in here. This should say about. Now we can go into style to style that. And let's tell it to be white. We'll use that fancy font that Bethany used before. Let's say we'll set the size to 40. And we'll close out of that. And let's get a little shadow. So we'll just go in and give it a black as a color and ramp that up. And you can see a little shadow behind it. Now we'll go over to the content tab. We'll center it. And now we're going to add an extra column. So we're going to right click on this column and add a column. Now just between these, you can grab on the middle and shrink it like that. And now all of a sudden it's starting to be where we want it to be at. Now for this particular column, we're going to add a background to it. So we'll come in here, choose that. And we're going to use our logo that we used earlier. We'll insert that. And we need to choose center, center. And we'll set the size to cover. And it's starting to look like the logo we want. Let's click on the text again. We're going to go in it to advanced. And we'll give it 20 at the top and 20 at the bottom. And now we have our logo at the top. Go ahead and go down to the bottom and click update. Now we can go back to our website and hit reload. And our header shows up and we're ready to add the next section. So let's go ahead and go back to Elementor. We're going to add a section. This is going to have two columns. The right column is going to have a picture. The left column is going to have text. Let's go ahead and set the background color for that section while we're here. So we'll pick color. I'll use Bethany's green again. And now we need to pick a picture for the right hand side. So we'll go up here to choose so we can drag in the image widget. We'll choose the upload file option. We'll go back to Bethany's images. And inside the images, we'll find the image we're looking for. And it'll be this one. We'll drag that over. And that loaded. And we can click insert media. And now we want to put some text on this side, so we're going to go back to Widgets. And we're going to choose Text Editor. And we want to put the content in here that goes there. So we will replace it with the right content. Choose a Style tab. Go into here. Color white. Close that. Let's make the font a little bit bigger. And we can scroll down. And that section is complete. We can hit update. Go back to our page. Hit reload. And we can see that's been added. And we just need to add the carousel at the bottom now. So let's go back to Elementor. I'm going to come to the bottom. And now we're going to choose this folder instead of this icon. Instead of the plus. Because we're going to go in here. And we're going to choose My Templates. And there's our My Templates. And there's our carousel. I'm going to insert that. I always choose no on this. And it inserts our carousel. Now notice that it's got the wrong color at the top. And because it's uh, I'm going to leave the footer at the bottom, it has the wrong color at the bottom. So we're going to just change those out. So we're in the section. And we'll go in here. Shape divider. Change the top color to that. We'll go into bottom. And we'll change the bottom color to match the footer color, which is the Bethany Black. And we can exit out of that. We can hit update. 
we can go back to our website and hit reload and the about us page is done just like that now we're ready to go to the next page so we're going to go back to Elementor and then we go to the icon up here exit to dashboard and now we need to go back to pages and pick our next page so we'll scroll down pick destinations Jamaica as our next page to edit click on edit with Elementor and now we can start on the destination Jamaica page and the first thing we'll do is make a column one column in that section we're going to stretch it full width and now let's set the background and we're going to use an image so we'll pick classic and we're going to need a loaded image from here so we need to go to Bethany's folder so we'll go to back up here destination Jamaica I went over here we needed to do the upload folder now we can just drag this over now that's added we can insert media and it shows at the top we're going to set attachment to fixed size to contained and now we're going to put some content in here so we'll go back up here and let's just drag this widget in there three times so the first one will be destination so we'll put that in there and then we'll go to style we'll set the color to white we'll go into typography we'll set this to say 23 um, she wanted to use a different font for this we're going to use this Vega font 200 for the weight close that we're going to go into the shadow we're going to do 5 and 2 2 this will kind of offset the shadow to the bottom right now we'll go into the next text we'll change that text here and then we'll go into settings under the style again we'll set the color to white we're going to do typography this time we'll do 33 font the Vigo again and then we can close that out and we'll do the shadow the exact same way 522 close that out for the last one it's going to say Jamaica go to style in this one we're going to set the color to Bethany's green we'll close that typography we're going to pick another font that Bethany likes squad of one We'll make this really big 330 close that go back to the color I wanted to make this a little bit transparent like that and then we're going to go in the shadow do the shadow the exact same way 522 close that and now for the blend mode on this we're going to do luminosity it's fun to play with the different ones to see the kind of effects now notice this hangs down a little bit as far as the word Jamaica we're going to move it up some but it's still going to look funny in here but when we produce it in our update you'll see that it looks correct also on this edge here these are too close to the left so let's go ahead and choose that section and inside of here we're going to unlink the padding and for the left hand side let's set that to 20 that moves it in a little bit and now we want to edit the position between here and here this is a neat trick so we're going to choose the Jamaica text and then we're going to go in advance and now we're going to use margin this time we're going to unlink those and one of the neat things you can do with margin is you can also give margins negative numbers so this top margin up here I'm going to say negative 30 and notice how it pulled it up there real nice like that now if I hit update and I come in here and I reload you'll see that it fits in there really nicely destination is a little high up here so I want to move it down a little bit and that'll move everything down just a tad so we'll click on destination advance we'll unlink this and for the top on this we'll put 20 and then we'll hit update and then we'll come back in here and hit reload and it's a little much because this is starting to show at the bottom so we're going to move this um, space get a little bit of that space out of there and a little bit of the space out of here so I'll come to um, destinations I'll come in here and we'll do that same trick we're going to go into margins unlink that and for the bottom margin now I'm going to put minus 10 and notice how it pulled it up a little bit and then for the Jamaica where we had minus 30 let's try minus 40 and we'll do update 
come back in here, reload, and it looks perfect now. So let's go ahead and view Bethany's website, and we'll see that she has the header at the top, it's got a title here, some text here, and then it has these fancy little progress bars, and they're in two columns, so we're going to do an inner column to do that. And then we got a, button, a bunch of buttons across here that we're going to add those as well. So let's go ahead and work on that first section. So we'll come back over to our WordPress. And then we're going to scroll down and we're going to pick to make a new section. And this section is going to be one column. Now we'll go over to our widgets. We'll put a header in there. Come back to the widgets. We'll put a text editor in there just below that. Go back to the widgets. I'm going to put an intersection just below that. And go back to the widgets and I'm scrolling down looking for what's called progress. And we're going to put a progress bar in the first one of those. And then once we build it, we'll make a bunch of copies and we'll copy them to either side. So we'll start by adding some style to the text header. We'll go to the content and choose center. And we'll set that to say introduction and then we're going to get to style it we're going to set the color to be bethany's teal and then we're going to set the typography to the fancy font that bethany likes size of 50 close that out now we'll edit this text paste in our content go to style and come into typography we'll use default font but make it bigger and we're going to use black here. And now we're ready to edit our progress bar. So we'll click on that. And the top here is what goes right there. So we'll change that to say accommodations. Then this sets the percentage of the bar. We'll say 80. And the inner text inside the bar is that text right there. Now we've got one of them completed. We're just going to make duplicates of these to make all six. And then we can change the content for those. So basically, I can come here, duplicate, 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 drag one of those over here, duplicate, duplicate. Now while I'm thinking about it, this text is a little too high up, so we're going to click on that text, go to advanced, unhook those, and then on the top of that, let's make that 30. That brings it down so that looks a lot better. Okay, so now we have these that need new content. And we'll go ahead and use some magic to do that. So the progress bars are complete, but in Bethany's site, she didn't have the percentages on here because these really aren't percentages. Those are kind of just approval ratings. And so really we want to go back and change that. And so what we need to do is click on each one of these. So for example, we can click on the first progress bar. And under display percentage, we just put hide, just like that. Now we'll just quickly adjust the other five to do the exact same thing. And our progress bars are complete and we're ready to work on our next section. And for here, we're going to add another intersection. So we're going to come back up to our widgets. And then we're just going to drag this intersection to here. And in Bethany's website, it has the yellow coming up next. So let's go ahead and add this little bar in between our separator. So we'll come into here. We're going to choose that section. Go to Style, Shape Divider. We're going to do a bottom and we're going to choose our waves brush and our color is going to be Bethany's yellow close that out and we'll put a height of 60 now we can see that it's there but it's a little bit close on here and obviously it's going to change when we put the other stuff in there but while we're in here let's go ahead and go to here and we'll unlink the padding and let's try 60 in here and now we're ready to start working on our button bar. So we're going to come back up to widgets. And we're going to choose a button. We'll drag that in there. And we're not going to need this empty column because we'll just copy the button column that we have to the left. So we'll right click that and delete it. And now for our button, we'll just come over here and tell it to be centered. And we're ready to add the rest of our formatting for that button. From here, we'll click on style. We'll set the background color for the button to Bethany's green. And then we're going to choose Hover and set the background color for the Hover to Bethany's Yellow. And now when we move over the button, we'll see that it highlights as we would want it to. So we're going to duplicate our button six times. Well, five. We need six. 
We'll right click there on the column, duplicate, and we'll do that four more times. So now we have our six buttons, and we're ready to get our buttons to point somewhere. But first, we need the sections that they're going to point to because this button's going to point to the next section. So let's go ahead and start the next section, and we're going to make this a single column. We'll go into Style. We're going to set the background for this section to Bethany's Yellow. Now we're going to add some widgets to that, so we'll come in and put a title widget there and an editor widget under there, like so. And then we're going to start putting the content in for those two. And there's actually a subheading, so we're going to put another heading in here, like so. So we'll go to edit the first heading, style, and we're going to pick Bethany's fancy font, and we'll set the height to 50. And we'll go ahead and set the text to that to be places to stay. And under style, we'll set the color to be white. Now we're ready to do the bottom one here. Text will be that. Go into style. We'll set this also to white. Close that. Typography, default font. Let's try 30. And then for the text for the bottom section, just change that out. And now we're actually going to need another section of text below that because we're going to put numbers next to it and show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and go back up here to widgets. We'll put another text editor down here. And for the one that we started with, let's go ahead and to style, we'll set this to black. Close that. Typography, default font, but let's go with 18 for the size. And then we'll do the same thing for the one down here. We'll go into style, color black, typography 18. For this particular piece of content, we want to make this a numbered list. And to do that, to make this software work well, you want to have the individual pieces of content have a space between them. Now, I did this in a text editor to make it work well for me. And so in this case, I'm going to highlight the five different areas I have, copy that to the clipboard, and then I can come over here and I can paste it in. And when I scroll up, I'll notice there's an individual line between each one of those. If you don't have that individual line, when you apply the line numbers, it'll only give you a one at the top. So now we can select all that, and I'm going to go click on line number, and if you notice now there's nice line numbers next to them. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and put in the bottom wave separator. So let's come up to the section for that. We'll go to style, and then we'll go to shape divider. This will be for the bottom. We're going to use our Waves brush, and we'll use Bethany's green for this, because that's going to be the next section below that. And we'll set this to 60. And now we scroll down, we can see that there's not enough space there. So again, come into Advanced, unlink those, and for the bottom, let's set this to 60. And now we've got plenty of space there. Now let's go ahead and visit Bethany's website again. And for the sake of time, notice that most of this is very similar to what we're already doing. The, the sections are changing colors and things like that. We have this special section here I'm going to show you how to do. But all the rest of this is very similar. And at the very bottom, there's also a photo gallery. I'm going to show you how to do that. But for the most part, that content's very similar. So I'm just going to do that behind the scenes. As a bonus for making it this far through the course, I'm about to show you everything you need to know about using Elementor templates. You have probably already figured out there's a duplicate version of this website, obviously because the site has the content for Bethany's already in it. So there also is a back end for that one. We're going to go into that back end, and here's the section for the places to stay that's completed. So in this section, I'm going to right click on this, and I want to save this as template. And then I'm going to give it a template name that has the word original on it, so I know it came from the original site. Now I'll click on Save to make a copy of that. Now it's listed in our list of templates for this particular site, but I need to use it in the new one we're doing. So I'm going to come over here, this little icon, and I'm going to export it. And it comes up with this box, and I want to save it as a file. And now that's been downloaded to my computer. And if I go to my Downloads folder, You'll notice that it's listed, but it has a really funny name. And you definitely want to change these names, so I'm going to go ahead and rename that. And I'm going to rename it what I named it originally. 
That way when I go to recycle it, it's going to make sense. Now we're ready to insert this version of the template into our version of the website. So let's go back to our Elementor. We need to save our updates that we were already working on. And now we're going to have to go back to the dashboard because you have to import them from the dashboard. That's the only way you can get the new templates back into your site that are exported. So we're going to click on Elementor. And it should just bring up your templates by default. If not, there's a My Templates option as well. And now from here, we're going to import new templates. So we'll click on Import Templates, choose File, choose the template to import, and Import Now. And now you see it shows up in our list of templates that we can use. Now we can go back to Pages. So we'll click on Destinations Jamaica, Edit with Elementor. And now we're back to our Jamaica Destinations page. And before we can insert the new piece, we need to come down here and remove the old section that we had. So we'll remove that section. And now we're going to go to our folder here. And inside the folder, we'll be able to get to My Templates. Now before we insert our template, I want to tell you about blocks and pages. Blocks are basically sections that you can add into your website project. Now any of them that say Pro next to them mean if you want to access that, you pay a one-time fee to Elementor to have unlimited access to all their Pro versions, which gives you access to the really nice ones. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's really a lot of stuff here. It just keeps going on and on and on. It's just wonderful what they've done, and many of them are free. There's also a lot of Pro versions as well. We end up getting the Pro version to have access to all the additional ones because it really wasn't that expensive. Now under Pages, these are entire pages that are complete. So if you wanted to have an entire page that was done and used it a certain way, you could go in here and just click on it. And again, the ones that don't say Pro are free, and the ones that say Pro, you paid a one-time small fee to them and you get access to all those unlimited. And then under My Templates are the ones that we've created or we've imported or we've saved. Now under this video, I've also have some content that shows you where you can find templates. For example, webyoda.com slash templates has all the templates that were in the different courses where we've used them. Also, Elementor is a partner with WebYoda, just like HostGator was a partner with WebYoda. So if you end up deciding you need the Pro version, a portion of those proceeds go to help provide additional free training for training centers and students online all over the world who can't afford training. And finally, there's Template Monster. And this site has templates for lots of different environments as far as building websites. In particular, they have a really good collection of ones that are used for Elementor itself. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress. And notice that now this one's available because we added it to our library. And so I'm just going to click on Insert. I'm always going to choose No for this. And now it's added to the site, but notice it has all the content. So not only did I save us the trouble, but I saved me the trouble of having to write this whole thing in there a second time. Notice in our import that the text is now no longer black. This seems to be an import issue. I'm sure Elementor will fix quickly, but in our case, I just went back and set it to black in the page. Now suppose you don't want to just save one section. What if you wanted to save the whole page? Well, the way you do that is down here, if you click on that little arrow, there's an option to save as template. And that would save the entire page as a template, and that allows you to import entire pages as templates. In fact, that's exactly what I did here. Once again, our import resulted in our black text becoming gray. Fortunately, Bethany provided me with a solution that we will apply later in this video. If you scroll down, you'll notice that now all the content is in the site, except for the small piece I'm going to show you how to do here, and the photo gallery at the bottom. Now, at the very top, we had these buttons. And now these buttons have names because we imported those. Now, when you click on one of these buttons, it shows a name here. Now notice that name has a pound sign in front of it. And the pound sign is required and then next to it is whatever the name of the link. We're going to link to inside of a page. So in this case it's going to be places to stay. And each one of these has its own name, things to do. Now to get it to go to that place we have to add a special widget. So let's go to our widgets and scroll to the bottom. And it's called a menu anchor. And we're going to drag that menu anchor just above the heading there. And then over here we can paste in the name of our anchor, but we got to take off the pound sign. Now at this point, when we scroll down and we hit the places to stay button, it automatically jumps to that spot. Now it turns out that all the other ones we've already put into place. So you can see that one goes there, and if you go down to the budget, it goes straight to the budget section. So if we hit on update, and we go back to our website and hit reload, now this will be the new version 
and each of these buttons will work and go to particular areas. Now at this point we're ready to go ahead and fill in those little sections that were left over from before. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress and from here we're going to scroll down to the section that we want to work on and we're going to work on this section right here. We're going to set this to stretch, full width, column gap, no gap. Next we're going to need some pictures to put in here. I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this because we're going to use it twice. And so now we're going to go back and get an image widget. Put one in there. Scroll down. I'm going to do the same thing here. Another image widget is going to go in there. Now we're going to choose an image for this one. We're going to upload one and we're going to use Bethany's folder. And then we're going to take this one. I'll drag it in just like that. Insert media. And now we're going to come over here and do this one. Same thing, we're going to add another file. And this time we're going to add that one. Insert media. And now we just need to put the content in these two fields. And those are going to be the text editor widget. So we'll grab one of those for each one of those sections. We can go ahead and style these. We can set the color to white. We'll close that. Typography. We'll put 18 as the font size, and we'll do the same thing over here. Style, color, white, close, typography, 18. Now each one of these is also going to have a little header on it. So we'll go ahead and pick a header and drag one of those on each side. Now we can style the headers. So we'll go into style. I'm going to set the color to white and do the other one the same way. Style, set the color to white, and we'll use the rest of the defaults. And now we just need to change out this content for these two sections. Now the content is now updated. We can hit update here. Go back to our website. Hit reload. And now we have that section complete. Except, look at this. These are really close on this one, and this one's not really close. This is that column. And we're just going to put 12 on here. I did it on that one. I forgot to do it on this one. We'll do update. Come back over. Reload. And now it fits there just fine. And we're ready to fill in our photo gallery. Let's go back to our WordPress. We'll scroll to the bottom. We're going to put a photo gallery right here. A bunch of images. So we'll go to widgets. Scrolling down looking for image gallery. Drag that in. Now we want to add some images to it. So we're going to click on Add Images. We're going to go back to Bethany's folder. And then we're going to select all the images that we want to be in the gallery. Drag them over and let those load. Now those are loaded. We can click Create New Gallery. Now we'll click Insert Gallery. And we're just going to change our image size to 300 by 300. And that looks really nice and pretty. But if you wanted spacing between them, you can go to Style, Spacing, Custom, and then put however much spacing you want. Now I can do Update. Go back to our page, hit Reload. And now our photo gallery is complete and we're ready to solve the mystery of why the text is gray inside Elementor. Originally, I thought, wow, you know, the import's not working right, can't really figure it out. And I pointed it out to Bethany, I was a little frustrated. She goes, what are you talking about? All you need to do is set your color defaults. And I was like, color defaults? Well, that makes a lot of sense. So basically, we go back to our dashboard. And when you scroll up, here's this gray text. Well, she had her default color set. Now, if we come to this icon over here, we can go into default colors, choose text, hit black, hit apply, and all of a sudden it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. So we'll go back to our page, we'll hit refresh, and everything's right now. To get started on our gallery, let's first look at Bethany's gallery. So we'll go back to her site, we'll go to the top, we'll click on gallery, and you'll notice that the top is basically the same as our about us, so we can recycle that. And we're going to enter another image gallery just like we had in the last one, but we're not going to put any spaces in between them. So let's go back to our WordPress. We need to go back to our dashboard. Choose Pages. Scroll down to our Gallery page. Choose that. Edit with Elementor. 
and we're ready to start creating this page. Now at the top of this page we want the About Us header and I actually went to the trouble to go ahead and do that behind the scenes for us so it's in my templates now. And there it is right there. So we're going to insert that. We'll click No. And there it is. It's already at the top of our page. Now we can just click on that text and instead of saying About Us, change it to Gallery. And now we want to add a new section so we're going to click on Section. We're going to put a gallery in there, so let's go in and put our image gallery. Choose that, drag the image gallery in there like so. We'll click on that, and we're ready to pick pictures for that, so add images. And from here, we're going to choose the images that were from our original carousel. But we don't need Bethany's profile picture in there, so that'll give us 24. We can say create gallery, insert gallery. Now we're going to set the image size to medium large, columns 3. Now we're going to go back in for that section and set the style. And we're going to set the background to Bethany's green, like so. And then at the top over here, we had a little text editor. So we're going to add one of those text editor guys right here. We're going to change out the text. Go back into style, color, white, close, typography, 18. We'll hit center. Now we need to add the waves brush to the bottom. So we'll choose this section and we'll scroll to the bottom. We'll go to advanced. Let's go ahead and unlink that and choose 80 as our bottom. Now we'll go into style, shape divider, bottom. Type equals Waves Brush, and the color is going to be Bethany Black. And then we'll come down here and set this to 60, and we should be ready to go. We can hit Update, go back to our website, click on Gallery, and our gallery page is complete. Now we're ready to go on to the Travel Tips page and start that one. With all the resources we've already created, the Travel Tips page is going to be really straightforward. So let's go to Bethany's website, and let's look at her Travel Tips page. And notice it has the same header as the About Us. It has these accordion sections that we saved one of those. And all we're basically doing is making a whole bunch of those and changing out the content. And at the bottom, it has the carousel just above the footer. So since we've already done all these things, I'm just going to go ahead and insert the travel tip page because I'm pretty sure you already figured out how that piece is going to work and we're ready to move forward to the Contact Us page. Let's visit Bethany's Contact Us page and we'll see that again it has the same header at the top as we had for the About Us. It has a little section here where it's got two columns and down here it also has two columns. We're going to be putting in a new form. We already made the back end for that and we'll be adding a map. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll head back to our WordPress. And from here, we need to go back to the dashboard. We'll click on Pages. We'll click on Contact Us, Elementor, and we're ready to get started on our Contact Us page. From here, we're going to click on the folder, go to My Templates, and we're going to insert the About Us header. Click No. And then basically, we just need to change this out to say Contact Us. Next, we're going to add another section. We'll make that two columns. And we're going to do the same thing again. And then for this first section, we're going to set the color to Bethany's green. Close that. And then we'll come to this section. We'll go into Style for that one. Set the background to Bethany's yellow. We'll close that. Now inside the first section, we're going to go into Advanced. We'll unhook that. We'll put a top margin of 20, a bottom of 60. And then we're going to go into Style, Shape Divider. And we're going to put our wave at the bottom. And we're going to choose the color of Bethany's yellow. Close that. Set 60. And now we'll basically do the same thing to the bottom section. So we'll go there, Advanced, Unlink, Set 20, Bottom to 60. We'll go into Style, Set the Shape Divider to Bottom, Waves Brush. And the color for this will be the footer black, so it's not all the way black. We'll close that, and we'll set the height of that to 60. And now all we need to do is put the content in those two sections. So we're going to come back into the widgets, 
And we're going to pick a header and put it in there like that. We're going to go to style. We're going to set the color to white. Close that. Typography. We're going to pick Robo Slab. And we'll set the size to 26. Now we'll go back over to content and we'll put in the content for the first one, which will be phone email. And now we'll come over here, we'll right click, we'll make a duplicate, drag it down there, and we'll make another duplicate, drag it over there, and another duplicate, drag it down there. And now the content is updated and we're ready to add a little icon list under each of these two. So go back into our widgets and we'll choose this icon list, we're going to put it there. We'll go ahead and format this list. Now we're only going to need two of them here. Spacing between, if you add something here, it just spreads these apart a little bit. Under icon, we're going to set the color of our icon to black. Close that. And then we're going to set the size of our icon, let's say to 18, make it a little bit bigger. We'll go into text. We're going to set the color of that to black. And then we'll just use the rest of the defaults. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to duplicate this because we're going to use another one on the other side that's very similar. And now we want to make adjustments to the content itself. And to do that, we'll select the widget. And over here, when you click on it, it'll do a pull down. You can set the text that's going to be over here to the right. And then you can choose an icon. So, for example, we want it to be phone. So we can click down here, and that'll open up the second one. And put the title for that one that shows up over here. And then we can pick the icon we want it to be. And now we're ready to work on the one on the right hand side. So we'll choose that one. First item. Heading for that will be that. And then we're going to choose the icon. And for the second one, we don't need an icon, so we're just going to click this X box to get rid of it altogether. And then for the list title item 2, we'll put the second part of the address. Now notice this is inset here, and we really want it to line up over here, but the problem is if you come here and you add spacing before this, regular spaces won't do anything. So we have to use a different trick to make it work, and what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, right click, and we're going to make a duplicate. And then in the first one, we're going to delete the second line, and in the second one, we're going to delete the first line. And now in the second one, we can come up to advanced, and we can unlink this, and let's say pick 23 and that'll line up and then we just have to adjust the spacing between these two and we can move that up using our little trick here so on the top let's try minus 15 and that looks about right now we're ready to add our message box so we'll go back to our widgets and at the very bottom is our void contact form 7 we'll add that in right there and then we'll come up and choose our contact us form and we're ready to do some styling on that so we'll click on styling in our first box we're going to put color black and that changes the color of that text in our all input CSS box we're going to put this which is going to change this box to white and allow black text inside of it and then in the text area CSS we're going to put the same thing which will allow that box to be white and allow black text inside of it and everything else should be fine so for our final section, we need to add a map. So we're going to go back to our widgets, choose Google Maps, drag that over there like that. And then over here, we paste in whatever the address is. I'm going to leave the zoom at the default. And then we're going to set a height, and this height is going to be based on how tall we need it to be to fill that window. And once you get it exactly right, you're ready to hit Update. We'll go back to the site. Hit contact us. And now we have a fully functional contact us page that's ready to go. So at this point, our website's pretty much complete. But if you look at Bethany's website on the home page, there was some animation that we want to show you how to do as well. So we'll click on the home button. And now when we scroll down, notice how this content kind of scrolls in like that. And then we come down and that swooshes in and that swooshes in. We're going to look real quick at how we do that. And then after that, we're going to look at how to get this text to come in like that. So let's go ahead and head back to our WordPress. And we're going to add animation to our home page. We need to go back to the dashboard. Go to Pages. Scroll down. Choose Home. Edit with Elementor.
scroll down and we want to animate this first section. Content animation is one of those super complicated looking things that's super easy to do. So for example, to add animation to this section, we're going to click on Bethany. We'll go to Advanced, and there's Entrance Animation. From here, we can do the pull down, and we can say Zoom In. And we can pick the header here, Advanced, Entrance Animation. So let's do Fade Down. We can choose the next header, Advanced, Animation, Fade from the left. And then this piece of content here, Advanced, Animation. We'll do Zoom In again. Now this is complete for that section. Hit Update. Go back to our website, hit the Home button. And we scroll down, and now that all animates. Now scroll down to the next section, and we're going to apply animation to the columns. It works the same way. For the left column here, I can choose that, go to Advance. I can say Animate In from the left. From the column in the middle, I can go to Advanced, Animation In from, say, the top. I can choose the third one, Advanced, Animation from the right. Now we can click on Update and go back to our site. Scroll down and watch as that animates in. And we scroll down to the next section and that animates in. And I went ahead and applied the animation to the rest of the sections. Let's go back to Bethany's site to look at the final animation effect we want to be able to accomplish. So we're going to click on Home Page. And notice how this text is flying in and it changes over time. Now this actually is a pro feature, and there's lots of amazing pro features. I just didn't cover those because I promised you could make this site and it will cost you. And I'm going to show you how you can put this text in where it doesn't fly in for free. But if you want to have this fancy fly-in thing, it's going to be the pro feature. It's not really expensive. Go.elementor.com, front slash WebYoda, gets you to the partnership and gets you a discount and gets you these amazing pro features. But let's go back to our home page and add this to our site. And from here we can scroll to the top. And let's do the free version first. If we click in here, we can choose the header. We can drag it in there. You can put whatever text you want. You can center it. You can go in and style it. We'll say we want it to be white. And let's say we want it to be the permanent marker font and then we'll make this let's say 70 and then let's say you want it to be a little bit transparent you can come back in there and so now you have a version of this that is free now if you want to animate this we got to do it a different way so we're going to have to delete that one we're going to click on our widgets icon again and I've added the Pro version down here so that we can have access to this animated headline. And I'm just going to drag that in right there. But let's see what that animated headline looks like. And I want you to just see a short piece about what you can do with just this. Look, it's an underline thing going on here. Make this text come in like this. Make this text rotate like this. Make this text highlight like this. So all of these things is just one particular pro feature, and this particular one's the one we're going to use. Let's edit our animated header, so we'll click on it and choose it. For style, we're going to pick rotating. For animation, we'll choose drop in, and we'll put some text in, and each of these lines are going to rotate through over here. Now notice the before text, that shows up here. The after would show up after it. But if you don't give any at all, then it's just going to rotate the text that's being animated. Now we can go to Style, and we can set Typography, and let's set this to 80. We'll come back out of that, and then we're going to set it specifically for the animated. We'll come in here, we'll set it to white, and we'll make it a little bit transparent. We'll close that. We'll come into Typography down here. We'll choose the font Permanent Marker. And now we have this text rotating, but notice it's shifted to the right. Now if we update that, and we go back to our website, and reload, and scroll up, you'll notice that it's not shifted to the right, so it worked the way we wanted it to. Now let's go back to Elementor. Now notice as these lines of text come in, there's no delay in between each line of text. If you want a delay, you come back to Content, and just put an extra space between each of the lines of text. So basically it's displaying empty text in every other space. So we can hit Update. Go back to our site. 
hit reload, and now we have that extra space in between. And as the last section for this tutorial, we're going to look at how to ensure that your website is both mobile and other device friendly. First, let's look at how to look at our website in different modes. This little tab right here, when you click that, this basically shows what it looks like on a desktop computer. Now at the very bottom, there's an option here, and we can select Tablet. At this point, we can see what it looks like on a tablet. But notice the section at the top doesn't look as good as we might want it to look like, as well as other sections below may also need adjustment. Now let's look at our website on a mobile device. Come back here. Now we click on Mobile. Now at this point, it looks like things may be working okay up here, but when you close this out, you're actually really seeing it in mobile mode. Now in this case, the technology for doing video backgrounds is not supported on some mobile devices, so in our case, we just want to go ahead and remove that feature altogether. So to do that, let's go back to editing, and now notice we're in editing for the mobile mode. I can choose that particular tab right there, and then under advanced, at the very bottom, let's close that, there's a responsive area. And under the responsive area, I can tell it with this thing right here, let's just turn that section off. Now when I close that, now that section's gone altogether and it actually looks pretty good. However, if we look down here, this Your Ultimate Vacation Guide thing really isn't working well. What if we just wanted to remove that? So we can come back over to our tab. Now we can click on that and go back into Advanced and then go back into the section at the bottom that's responsive and we can tell it to hide that particular item on mobile as well. And now we can push that back out. And now when we look at our website, this is what it looks like on a mobile device. And this is looking really good now. From here, if we scroll down, we'll see that our website looks pretty good, the front page on this particular um, format for the mobile device. And I think what we're ready to do is to look at what this is going to look like on a tablet and make our adjustments there. So to make tablet adjustments for our main page, we'll click this little icon. It comes back out. And now at the bottom, we're going to choose tablet. And I'll go ahead and close that to get it out of the way. And now what we want to do is we want to change this because that's really not working well. So what if we were to change this to where it didn't have a video, but instead it had a um, image? So the first thing we'll do is we'll come up to the top and we'll choose that section. We'll go into advanced and then under responsive for tablet, we'll also turn that off. And so when we click here, now that goes away. Now we want to add our new image at the top, so let's go back to our edit mode for tablet, and we'll click here to add a new section. We want that section to be one column. We'll stretch it. We'll make it full width. And now we'll go into style, and we're going to set a background image. And we'll click here, and then we want to go to upload files, and then we want to go to Bethany's folder, and we want to drag that over. And now that's loaded. And we can hit Insert Media. And now we have the media here at the top. Let's go into Advanced. We'll unclick these. Let's set this to, say, 400. And now let's see what it looks like. And see, now we have this image at the top, but it really doesn't have the exact look we want it to have. So go back to our Edit Mode. We have the background here. And we want to go back into Style. Position, Center, Size, Cover. Now we can look at it again in tablet mode, and that's looking really good at that point. Now one of the things you need to be careful about is that when you make these adjustments, they only show up on the pages you want them to show up. So for example, if we go back, and then we choose at the bottom to look at this in mobile mode, and we go back out, you'll see that that image shows up on the mobile mode, which obviously wasn't what our intention was. So we can go back into edit mode. That section's already selected. We can go to advanced. And then under responsive, we're just going to tell that to be turned off on both the desktop and the mobile. And now when we go back to the mobile version and we close that out, now it looks the way we want it to look. Now let's proceed back to the tablet mode for editing because I had another adjustment I wanted to make. If you come down here, you'll notice that the section right here, that these things are really tight on each side. 
what we want to do is adjust the padding only in the tablet mode to give those more space. So we'll come back into edit mode and we'll choose that text. We'll go to advanced and in here, let's say I just put five, go to here, advanced, five, and here, advanced, five. And that gives us a lot more room, but now we need some padding at the bottom of this because clearly it's hitting a wave. So let's go into that area, advanced. And now on here, we had some space at the top, but now for tablet mode, we're going to put some space at the bottom. Let's put 60, and 60 looks about right. Now we can hit update, go back to our website, and hit reload. And we notice that none of the changes that we made for the tablet and the mobile device version have affected what happens in our main site. Now that was just a small sample of the type minor adjustments you can make to ensure your site is mobile friendly and other device friendly. But feel free to use those exact same techniques throughout your entire website to get everything looking perfect on every possible device. So that about wraps it up. You should now have all the tools and skills needed to build your own professional WordPress website. I hope you've enjoyed the course. I certainly have enjoyed being your instructor. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the video below to help me spread the word to as many aspiring web designers as possible. Again, my name's Yoda. It's been a pleasure being your instructor today. I look forward to hearing from you below, but until then, have a great day. Peace out. You're still here? It's over. Go home.